So whose idea was it to make the Christmas season in Australia so strikingly hot? Like, hold on, what's the weather? Just an out, outside temperature. I can't count, count in time. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B&I stream today on this fine 2nd of December, 2024. It is uh, 25 degrees outside right now at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> it's just hot as. Uh, and that always means it's usually about five degrees hotter indoors. So I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, yeah, no, my week is, um, I got lots of things going on, but, uh, we still got time to play a game, shall we? So how about let's dive straight into the game. Uh, here we go. Whoa. And there we go. I realized one thing for various other PS1 games, and I should probably test this out a bit more, is uh, I've not been playing under the right aspect ratio for many games. Uh, usually what I've been doing is I've been playing with the, uh, the RetroArch core provided aspect ratio, but I've realized that the PlayStation 1 renders mostly, usually all the time, at a resolution of 256 by 224, which is an 8 by 7 aspect ratio. Uh, there's other aspect ratios out there, but um, really you should be playing a 4x3 and stretching it out a little bit. Um, things like you'll notice circles, like go back to, if you're watching the VOD, go back and watch the PlayStation, the Sony logo at the beginning. And you'll notice that definitely is square when you tilt your head. But if you're not playing at 4x3, you're playing 8x7, it's going to look a little diamondy and not parallel or not perpendicular. And it should be perpendicular. So that's kind of your key tell that you've got the aspect ratio right or wrong. Uh, but what is this game? This is Gex 3. Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko for the PS1. The third and, uh, so far, last Gex game. Gex is a, um, uh, how would I say, an unfortunate direction, but remarkably, it pulled it back. Gex was originally a 3DO platform mascot, uh, designed and developed by Crystal Dynamics, famous for making, uh, eventually in... I don't know how many people are still there from these days, uh, but they made the the legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, which uh, actually has a demo in the <laughs> in this game as well, which is great. It's I think it's just a video, but it's still kind of neat that there's one there. Um, uh, you may also remember them for doing the Tomb Raider reboots from Tomb Raider Legend, uh, Anniversary, and Underworld, and then eventually they did the other reboot as well. And then they eventually did that Avengers game that people forgot about, and then I don't know what they're doing now. But, uh, there's a Gex remaster coming up. But, uh, nothing beats just playing it on the original hardware. So let's dive into it. Uh, I have not played Gex 1 or 2 on this channel, so don't go back and try and find those. But go in the future to try and find those, if I will. Uh, if I do. Gex 2 is mostly the same game, so if you've ever played Gex 2, but not this one, this is a lot of the same... Uh, but I find Gex 3 is an easier one to jump into. Got ourselves an intro cutscene, because of course we do. And that's how the mayor got his pants back. What's this? Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been handed some late breaking news. Uh. Special Agent Extra, head of the TV Terrorist Defense Unit, and star of many of my private dreams, is apparently missing. Jerry Springer! Agent Extra was oh, last no. seen wearing 8 inch pumps and a red bathing suit. Her current whereabouts. Gex. Gex. Agent Extra? You poor kidnapped mate. Hey, Tiger. Guess where I am? Trapped in the media dimension. Trapped in the green screen. He's back and he's kidnapped me to get to you. He's attacking your secret island cave. Hey, speaking of secrets, you want to see my... Gex, quit clowning around and get me out of here. Get me out of here. Creeps. Just dial me in. You are now being so connected, though. Gex, listen up. That's Did me trying to search things and I get a... I, <laughs> uh, I tried. Get out of here. She's in the watch. Yeah, you and every other beautiful government agent trapped in a TV set. I'm on my way. Slamit. Slamazin. There's a bit of an FMV <laughs> quality difference just kicking in there. Gecko weapon, baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay, how do I summarize Gex? Uh, first of all, Gex is a uh, one-line spewing machine. He says every single one-liner ever, 
and he will say it so many times, you will get very bored. Or tired. Or tired and bored. But it's kind of funny. It's funny how long we can draw it out. Uh, he has a literal Playboy model uh, damsel in distress to save, uh, which uh, for some people out there, they may say, isn't that a bit, you know, behind the times or problematic? And I'm like, yeah, but they drive it into the ground so far, you gotta appreciate how, <laughs> how much effort they're trying there. Uh, your main goal of the game is to pick up these remotes. Uh, Gex 3 is a collectathon, and Gex 2 is a collectathon. Gex 1 is a little bit more of a regular old 2D platformer. Um, there's a lot of things going on right here as well. How do I summarize? Uh, purple TV things give you lives. There will be so many lives all over the course of the game. There are bonus tokens, these coins, that will unlock bonus levels. There's these little paws. The paws will... Uh, collect 25 of them, you get an extra hit, uh, and there's a lot more than the max number you can get, so don't worry about that. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, you'll need the remotes to continue the game. Oh, the flies, uh, collect 100 flies and you'll get a free remote, but only in not this hub. There are four hubs in the game, and this is one of them. Uh, this includes a little tutorial section as well that we can, uh, toy around with. Here we go. allow you to brush up on your skills. My skills. So, uh, yeah, pretty much just teaches you just some basic mechanics of the game, as well as also very briefly rewarding you for it. Press the attack button to tail whack those hideous dummies. Those hideous dummies. Kind of annoyingly, these uh, dummies take two hits as well, which is like, <laughs> I want to go quickie. I want to go quick here. But no, they make you spend the time. Uh, but yeah, no, you got a tail attack, you got a, um, a movement system. Kind of annoyingly, this game has analog stick movement, but it doesn't feel right. Also, you will find many of these, like, extra goodies everywhere if you're, if you're looking. Which always makes me a bit, uh, self-conscious about just, like, even the previous room. Hold on, because I didn't even check the walls. I'm pretty sure there's nothing in the previous room, because, like, you know, where else could we be? And I believe we do have... A first person button in any other room but this one, so never mind. Um, hopefully, I grab everything. Uh, fortunately, if you do think you're missing stuff, the total screen will tell you everything in that one level, so including the hubs, so that's all good. Uh, but yeah, no, we've got four hubs. Um, the main, I guess, the pacing of the game I'm gonna try and do for the streams is every uh, week, every stream, I'm gonna try and do a hub and three levels. But the first hub only has two levels, and the fourth, the second hub has four. So, and the last hub has two as well, so we're actually only at 11 levels, but... We try our best. But it should pace out, because I think there's some longer levels in the middle, so that'll give me a little bit of leeway in case there's a slow one. Uh, there's a very weird... Yeah, there's a very weird jump over here. And yeah, I can see the pour over in the corner, but this one's a very odd one, so... Hold on. <laughs> Oh, you can see the, 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 the coins there. Ooh, that was a good jump there. Uh, yeah, you've got bounce as well, so as long as you hold X at some point in the air, we'll do a little pogo, which is very fun. I don't think there's anything over on the other side. Nah, nothing on the other side, so that's all good. Uh, the pogo will disorient you a little bit, though. It will definitely make your eyes bounce a little bit. Uh, but we'll get there. It's all good. Uh, this, uh, this room is tutorializing the pogo because the platform moves up a bit too fast. You know, Gex has been awfully silent. He's not actually saying that much. You, he'll, he'll say a ton when we get into the level, though, I tell you. Um, but yeah. So why Gex 3? Well, mostly because the first level is a Christmas-themed level, so spoilers, but, uh, yes! Welcome to the festive season of the Christmas time, the Yule time. Chris Crouch whilst running to perform a deadly karate a kick. A deadly karate kick. I don't know if this actually attacks enemies in any way. Maybe. Uh, so what is my history with Gex? Well, first of all, I did know Gex from the meme somewhat. Gex has been uh, revered as a wonderfully meme-worthy character, uh, mostly for his um, complete datedness of just referencing things in the uh, the 90s and potentially just culture that did exist in the 90s. Um, but as... Oh, 
was holding forward and the camera wasn't even facing the right way. That's on me. Um, but in terms of, uh, like, you know, this era, you know, I, I never did play Gex at the time. But I've played so many 3D platformers that it seems very up my alley already. And uh, Gex 3 is... Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely just one of those collectathons. I don't think it does anything too exotic. Um, but one thing I do love about this game in particular, Gex 3, is the, uh, the nice variety between the levels. Um, we've also got this vault here. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit, don't worry. And by a little bit, I mean maybe at the end of the game. <laughs> Uh, I believe you can... Nope. There's some extra things as well, but we've got two, uh, two directions. Mr. Wonka, Baruka stole a gobstopper. Stole a gobstopper. There you go. Uh, but yeah, this is how we enter the levels. Sort of a Banjo-Kazooie style. Uh, you got your little thing here. Um, as well as also every level right next to it has a bonus section, a bonus minigame. Uh, but they require the bonus coin, so that's what uh, gets you there. I don't think I've really got anything stopping me from just diving straight into the level. So we start off with the Christmas level. Uh, all the levels usually have a boring name and then an okay name, so Totally Scrooge is our level. Um, also, yes, the game is indeed loading as you do that, so <laughs> the longer I wait on that screen, I'll hide the fact that the game is actually secretly just loading there. Than a supermodel scare at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is, uh, well, welcome to the first level of Gex 3, which is, uh, potentially what some people may think the game is all about. Uh, but trust me, it's not all Christmas-themed. In fact, it's only the first level, really. Uh... Also, the game lags the heck out right away on this first level. So, uh... There's lots of things that will give you these flies. You need to collect all exactly 100 of them in order to get a, uh, a freebie remote. Picking up any other remote, just like uh, Mario 64, I guess. Um, uh, collecting any other remote will exit the level, but fortunately, uh, you know, the, the remote for collecting 100 flies, when we get to it, you'll be like, oh yeah, you just get that for free. Um, but yeah, these flies are just like, oh my gosh, they are tough to track down. As well as also, uh, yeah, there's going to be some levels where the flies get very brutal, because uh, obviously from knowing Mario 64, if you die, well, you lose all your stuff, right? This game is nice, it has checkpoints. But it's not nice because it doesn't always have checkpoints. It depends on the level. And it depends on how you personally activate them. But you'll see things just activate and appear all over the place in this game. Um, as well as also, I'm just talking over Gex as he's uh, casually providing all his fun commentary, which is great. Um, but it's a very quick fire game and it's definitely one where there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things to just like look at and be like, oh my gosh, like what's going on here? So as I do this, uh, this first kind of foray through the level to give you a good kind of overview of everything in it. Uh, usually most levels are broken down to small different scenes as well that are separated by um, mostly just a rendering wall. Uh, nothing too uh, too harsh. Um, but here we are introduced to uh, well the end point of one of the one of the um oh. Uh, got an almost mini boss right in the first level. Not, not a lot of levels even have a mini boss, and the uh, the angle is a bit weird to get this guy. But uh, we try our best. There we go. And uh, that reveals the first remote. So if you wanted to get a remote right there, you can. Uh, these green TVs drop green flies, and green flies are green health. So. But yeah, four hits, you die, and then you go back to a checkpoint, which for the most part doesn't do too much, but it will reset all your flies uh, up to the last checkpoint. And there's going to be some worlds where I'm just going to get bitten by that. That's not going to be fun. Uh, this first area is probably the largest part of the level. And there's lots of little, like, little bits over here, like this just casually has a life, just chilling right here. Does everyone remember Croc 2? I don't know, I just get vibes. Greetings, Blob, how's it going? 
We're gexing it up. <laughs> gexing it up. Uh, you'll see me just uh, bounce constantly. I don't think it makes you any faster. I just do it for fun. Very nice artistry right there. There are symbols and there's writings all over the place in this game as well. Like you're gonna see just text imply things that don't actually exist in any way, shape or form. Uh, I would probably say they put in uh, a crazy amount of effort into, you know, art and other kinds of assets. And they, uh, unfortunately, uh, my uh, praise of the game also, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of a criticism of the game as well, in terms of, uh, maybe there's a little bit too much going on, and I don't think it's quite the, uh, why did, why, yeah, why do the penguins make turkey noises? That is a good question. This game is very unexplainable. I, I, I think that's the easiest thing. Also, have I been hitting these, uh, these things once? Because, uh, I, you meant to hit them three times. Only this level. Only this level. Also, this has a chimney that you can go down. It has a life. It has a bonus token. I, I, I'm literally only playing this for, for Christmas just because the first level is a Christmas level as well. That's that's the only, that's the only one, yes. Uh, you'll, you'll sometimes get, like, uh, a bonus level, share a little bit of theming as another level. I don't know why they sound like turkeys. Uh, but yeah, no, it's the only, it's the only bonus, oh sorry, the only uh, Christmas level in the whole game. And Gex has a different outfit in every level as well, so, which is nice and fun. Uh, now over Gex 2, which, uh, you know, I may play at a later date, not against Gex 2. I think Gex 1 is maybe a little less interesting, but I've only played, really, I've only played each game once. Um, but, uh... Yeah, no, Gex 2 is more of more of this, uh, although I think there's a bit of a level theming overlap. It's exact same. It's, there there's so many fun, like, they're not royalty free, but they all came on like, it was like a company that would just sell like sound effects CD and you'd have the, the rights to use these sound effects as long as you had the CD. And it just so happens that lots of developers had the same CD. Yeah, exactly. Doom's the same boat. You got so many sound effects in Doom that you're just like, oh yeah, I know that one. Sign say Rudolph is a brown nosed reindeer. What the heck? What the heck, guys? I think your friend Rex might need a bit of a thaw. Dude, imagine like falling off a ledge like that. Oh, I would be terrified about like anyone like freezing like that, you know? Would you be okay if you were like frozen like that? Like, I know lots of science fiction has like cryogenic freezing and stuff like that. But I, uh, like, I don't know, like, uh. Let's just say, let's not test it with a human. Test it with, like, anything else. Like, when you stop someone because of freezing, how do you get them back up again, like, real quick? Without them just feeling like, you know, basically getting burned, because that's what, that's what freezing does. Rapid change of temperature. Speaking of rapid change of temperature, uh, you can swim in the water. Uh, you can, uh, we've got a little oxygen part. There's not that many swimming parts of the game. There's a few, but not that many. Uh, so most of the main levels, just for reference, uh, will have, um, ten, uh, paws and three bonus tokens. I don't think there's really any exceptions, so... We'll probably get a health up, well, we'll probably get all the health ups before the, um, end of the third stream, let alone the fourth one. But yeah, as an introductory level, not a lot really goes out and kills you, and there's not a ton of levels with bottomless pits. I'd probably say bottomless pits are actually, like, the least of your concern, and maybe just more questionable hit detection is, uh, you know, more the problem. Uh... Here's another uh, fun piece of Gex trivia. Uh, Gex 3 is, or Gex 1 and, sorry. Yeah, Gex in Europe always has a different voice actor, which is quite curious. Uh, and in Gex 3, it's voiced by, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the actor name. He does, he, he does the sorting hat in 
the movies. He does the sorting hat in the Harry Potter movies. He is Gex. Uh, now, the dialogue is very different. He's a bit more like, kind of got that witty kind of vibe rather than, uh, how, would I, how would I describe this Gex? I sit in front of the TV and watch too many things so, so much. I'm doing references just accidentally. That's, that's Gex, pretty much. Does he mean it? Who knows? Probably more Austin Powers, you know, with his reference earlier. But, uh... I don't know, I, I think there's probably a, a fun little cultural difference. Uh, we're playing the US version here, so... Uh, we'll get all those wonderful voice lines. And he'll also never shut up. If he says the same line twice, by the way, take a shot, because it, it will happen sometimes. Other than that, though, you know, we're just sort of breezing through the level and uh, picking up these uh, these flies, and then we're probably gonna just usually how I go is I, I pick up just the furthest remote, and then we come back for the rest. Uh, hmm. I think I need to take out these. Uh... Why do the elves look so evil? How do how do we manage to make elves look so evil? This is like dwarf propaganda right here, making elves look evil. So the Swiss flag? Oh, it's not the Swiss flag, it's inverted, isn't it? Actually, that could be the Swiss flag. Also, Rez's rink, that's right, our villain is Rez. Rez is a... Robot? I don't know my Gex lore, actually. Uh, this level ends in a snowboarding section. The only snowboarding section in the whole game. And then Gex even makes a comment about it. Thank you, Gex. Also, Elphus. Elphus, Night North Pole, Halloween. Civic Arena. Uh, so your goal with this part is, I believe, you just got to defeat the the elves around here and claim your prize at the bottom of the hill. And that's the end of the level. Most of the levels are usually a... Uh, well, sometimes they're a linear straight line, but we'll have a decent bit of variety. Um, other than that, though, yeah, I'd probably just say it follows the Mario 64 structure. There's not really anything it does too wacky. Uh, having extra pickups, like the bonus pickups and the, the health pickups, are nice. Um, but ultimately, you're not doing anything too, you know, wildly different. And maybe that's a little bit of what Gex's identity crisis is, where at the end of the day, he, uh, you know, he is just a collectathon. He. Uh, People will meme about Gex, but at, it is a very normal collectathon. Uh, one with rather stiff control sometimes. And a bit of a shocking draw distance. Um, fortunately, though, this game was released, uh, I believe it's on PC as well, but uh, um, it's also released on the Nintendo 64. And uh, some people as well, uh, when we get up to, there's a Grease level. And they, uh, they completely scrapped the grease level that was in this game and changed it with something that would be a little less aggravating uh, for the Nintendo 64 rules, but for the most part, that, uh, that's the same game. Also, very nice. We got all the, all the flies in one go and got a remote. So you get a free remote like that, and then... It's tail time! It's tail time. Everyone likes a good old tail time. Every time you beat a world level for the first time, you also get a little greeting. Nice work, Frosty. You're getting warmer. Not warm enough. Not this warm is over, enough. I say we perform a few experiments with body. Good technique. But that hat does nothing for me. Now how about you focus that extreme sports tale of yours on getting me out of here? Thank you, uh, Playmate of the Month, March 1998. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, oh, that was, that was the second remote? Because you saw the other remotes, it was the evil Santa and then the ice sculptures probably seemed quite obvious. Um, but yeah, now that we've done the, uh, done the, uh, and, and unlike Mario 64, there is no reason you can't do any of these, uh, remotes out of order. Like, picking it from the beginning only means that intro. That's the only thing it means. So uh, now we'll just blitz through the level and uh, try and find these uh, statues and then eventually defeat Evil Santa 
or do the evil Santa first, depending on. Ah, oh, we'll do the statues first. Also, that reminds me, did I pick up. Oh, I picked up everything, yeah. Got the bonus tokens and the paws already. Jeez. Love these dancing signs, though. Uh, so, okay, let's do a little bit of a retro achievement shout out. Uh, the set for this is uh, pretty nice and ordinary. It doesn't do anything too uh, wacky or different um, for the most part. It's just collecting everything. And you've got a couple of ones like collecting um, excess lives. Uh, I don't think there's even one for doing boss fights without like taking hits. Mostly because it's probably a bit harsh to, to do sometimes. Um, but I will add, there is one achievement for beating the whole game in a single session uh, without uh, increasing your health at all. Okay, sure. And there's another one for beating the whole game in, is it, it's three hours, right? Oh, that's a bit of a push. It's a bit of a push, so I haven't gotten either of those, but um, yeah, the rest of it's pretty alright. I don't think it was really too, too cryptic or hidden. Um, but I'm working through, uh, just playing through a few, uh, sets of my own as well. Um, I probably, I, I need to pick up a new set to actually develop, so, uh, unless someone locks it in in the next, you know, few days, I'm just giving myself a bit of a breather, because I've got some things going on outside of, uh, stuff, so once I've got some free time, I'll be like, yeah, I'll lock it in. Um, but I'll probably pick up, a uh, Hexen on the set, because, uh, I've played Hexen on this channel already, ages ago. Uh, it, no, 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 no. We're not playing for the whole game in one stream. Uh, if, if anything, I'd probably say these streams may lean a little closer to the, like, under two hour mark. Not too far under two hours. Um, because the main, the main goal is every stream's gonna have, like, we have 11 main levels. We have four hubs. And there's a bonus level for every main level. And there's also some extra bonus levels as well. So, that's the amount of things we have to do. But I'm sort of padding it out a little bit to, um, you know, get to Christmas, basically. Because we've got four weeks of Christmas. Four weeks until, well, three weeks until Christmas now, but... Including this one, you got one, so... Uh, where was that? Because that leads directly to the ski slope. We've already done the ski slope, so... It's probably back here somewhere. Oh, no, yeah, 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 sorry. My brain's just like mental fighted, like what's the layout of the level? Uh, we, I mean, we do have three Gex games, that is true. That is true. There we go, bounce on that, there we go. It's tail time. You gotta say tail time every time we get a remote. Which will be, what, 33 times in the whole game? So, how many remotes is that in total? I think it's 50. I think it is 50. Also, look at that! Lock and load, <laughs> now we have the ability to just leave this hub. This hub does not end in a boss fight as well. So, uh, I guess that's one thing as well. Polar Projects. The projects? Hold on. <laughs> Never trust evil Santa Claus. I love how many evil Santa Clauses there are in, in so much media as well. They're just everywhere. We got good Santas all over. We got a... I, <laughs> how many? What, what's that one Christmas movie coming out? Red One? If you haven't heard of Red One, this is not a... This is just subliminal advertising. You know this one, like, big budget movie that definitely needs to do well or else... Uh, what film studio is even behind it? I don't even know. They're spending way tons of money on that, so we'll see it pay off. I just hope that the trailer isn't containing everything. That's always a worry about some movies. Sometimes the trailer has all the fun parts in it, and you're just like, oh, I wanted to see more, and instead I just saw everything as a dead Santa. Also, they do the static fade out. That's not an emulator bug. That's just what it looks like. It's a cool effect. I like it. I'd say in general this game is like all right looking. It's got that just normal PS1 kind of aesthetic, but it's not it's not particularly wobbly. That's always a a a, a um a trend with a PS1 games, just the wobbliness, uh, which reminds me of uh, let's let's uh, do the uh, drum roll, the Blendo rips on some random Twitter user because it came up 
in a quote tweet once. I don't know. Uh, someone uh, had a video of a, like a camera panning around some like, uh, I guess, decrepit castle environment. That's this level done, by the way. We're done with this one. Easy. Um, this decrepit castle environment, and uh, it was it was very wobbly. All the text, all the models were like sort of doing an integer rounding wobbleness. And, uh, someone is just like, it's very try-hard to, like, catch up with the, um, you know, the PS1 aesthetic. And then, half the replies were agreeing with this person, and half the replies were, actually, this is a clip from Vagrant Story on, the, like, an actual PS1 game. Uh, this will show up in maybe, like, three bonus games. You gotta jump around and kick these bells. You gotta... Fresh dingo berries. Also, this happens when you stand still. It's very good fun. Think about it. This came out before Spyro 3. Outback meant outback. Outback meant outback. Never trucks a trust a Gex one-liner. Uh, this bonus level is very straightforward, though. You guys, you just gotta go up, you get some extra time as well. Uh, just snag, I think it's three bells on each level and four at the top. Isn't this where Yahoo Sirius is from? Wow, Gex. Wow! Don't mention Yahoo in this house. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Oh no, I only have 80 seconds to climb up this one, this one bit. And here we go, we're at the end of, uh, you know, our bonus level. The bonus levels are fairly, fairly quick. Dude, there's something weird about the trees being just, like, textures on the wall, you know? So zero. So what's your reward for doing a bonus level? Well, you get a life. And, uh, interestingly, when you, uh, back out, uh, the, the thing now, it'll say this code. Triangle, circle, star, square, square, x. Triangle, circle, star, square, square, x. Yes. So, how you do this is that, uh... I believe, uh... The, um... How do you do this? Uh... I think you just pause the game. Oh, well, not when you're moving. I think you pause the game, and then you hold, like, quit, and then you hold down L2, and you insert in a... I forgot what you do about the star, like, cause, cause we had triangle, circle, square, and X in there, so what's the star mean? Who knows? Um, but they all rely, or, you know, they're all cheat codes, so, uh, you just need to, you know, input a cheat. Uh, we've got a thing in the center here, this is, uh, basically our key into the next world. Uh, every other world will put this behind a, uh, a boss fight, but this will lead to the next world, which is Lake Flaccid. Um, very nice name, by the way. Uh, but we have two levels in uh, this first little hub area. The other one is uh, over here. Clueless. Let's wander in here. Now, I like that every single level has just like a little bit of a pre-area going on. Uh, and some of it actually relies on your understanding of the level itself. So, here we are. Let's Mystery TV. On. Now, this one definitely is a much more curious level, I'd say. Um, the snow one is very ordinary, I'd, I'd probably add, it's like, ah, it's just a snow level. This one, you know, we got, we got our, our every trope going on. We got our hedge maze going on, we got a mansion at the front. With my trusty magnifying glass, I can spend the entire day burning ants. Nice. <laughs> He's just wandering around in his, uh, uh... I feel like Lester the Mogexter. Wow! Gex, you can't say that! <laughs> Or maybe he can. Dude, it's gonna be wild when they remaster it. It's not Christmas. Hey? Yes, it's not Christmas. We <laughs> remove the Christmas. It's all over. Um, this is a weird one to I jump to. Like I lost a bet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not gonna be Christmas for the rest of the game. It's only Christmas for a little bit. What did I play for Christmas for other years? We did Tomb Raider 3 last year at the end. And it ended in, um, in uh, blah blah. It ended in Daddy. Antarctica. Jeff so, Uncle Jed, Uncle Jed, 
Also, yeah, these TVs is where my uh, my gripe with the hit detection kind of comes in. You'll see me often struggle with hitting these guys quite reliably. Uh, some of that I'll blame to my expertise, and some of that I'll just blame to some very harsh hit detection on the spin. Should have enough time to grab this. I like this level a fair bit, and I think there's actually a lot of very interesting and fun levels. So, I hope uh, you'll enjoy the- for a video game. For a video game. Those statues look like switches to me. Usually I don't think statues are switches, but... Yeah. I guess he's right. I love this going on here, this little window. Transparency in a, in a um, PS1 game is like, oh, oh. There's actually a, you can see that up there, there's a token up there and it's a bit of an awkward jump. Cause you gotta basically be up here. I think you could do a jump from the bed as well. Yeah, you could do a little round hop from the bed. And after you come out of here, <laughs> they yoink your camera just to tell you that some, uh, bears have come alive. Bears alive, bears alive. Goldfinger's Fortress, this is not. Ouch. Landed straight on the bear. Let's hit enemies. Very nice. But yeah, uh, that person complaining about Vagrant Story without knowing it was Vagrant Story. To be fair, uh, I think it's very easy for people on the internet to say wild takes like this without knowing. For example, I don't know what Vagrant Story looks like. I know of the game by name, but I don't act, I've never played it, so I'd need to play it at some point. I think the RPG I'm working through right now, I'm actually, I started playing the set for Maple Story DS. I hear 100%ing that on Retro Achievements, it's going to be an absolute like grind, so I might, uh, I might just give it a, a playthrough, we'll see how we go. Um, but I recently played through uh, Shenmue, so we'll give that a bit of a chat right now. Um, Shenmue, I had a lot of thoughts about. Uh, it's a, uh, how would I describe it? Um, it is one of the, like, first modern AAA games in the sense that they are All nowadays. No TV. And how would I put that? It's basically, like, it's a mechanic m menagerie. It has so many different mechanics and things going on, and it truly does favorite storytelling. Um, so it's got a very, like, neatly large world. This is what I mean by, like, if you die here, it's like, yep, you gotta just pick up all your flies again. And sometimes it's a bit brutal. Especially early on in the game, because you don't have enough hits. Once you have, like, eight hits, it's like... And it has quick quick time events, yes! I, I don't know if it coined the term quick time events, but it refers to them as quick time events in game, so... Certainly one of them. Um, here's something very odd as well. If you stand... Uh, here, and then you hold triangle. Just on this level, Gex has a magnifying glass. You can look towards the little sparkly, and then he, uh, shrinks. There's nothing better than a good mental in the morning. This is what I mean by the, uh, joys of the spin attack. Because, uh, I'm trying to hit him without making it seem like they're gonna hit me. I could just do the jump kick, can't I? That's probably a bit more reliable. Uh, also, kind of annoyingly, every time you... There's three of these in this level, but every time you do one... Also, this is only for the bonus coins. Every time you, you reveal the coin... The timer keeps going! How cruel. Also, yeah, did you see that? How mean. <laughs> How very mean. Putting that down there. Fortunately, I don't think anything stops you from just going back every time. This is one ritzy joint. We do have to Our defeat these guys, so. This tail kick probably gives it away, but I should be doing this the whole time. I do like how every level does have its own very distinct enemies, though. And I think that leads to some of the charm of this game, is that it really does, you know, it, 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 it uses its setting to its maximum. It, bas it basically hits every single TV genre or every single, you know, movie reference I can roughly think of. Not every movie reference, because that's, that's a bit harsh, but you know what I mean, like... 
Wow. But it's got so many nice environments. Um, and something about the second game is that there's... Even though it's got more levels, it doesn't have quite as many bonus sections. And did I really just go back and forth in one go? Wow. Okay. Um, it also reuses its environments a fair bit. Sir, try standing on the magnifying glass icon and looking around you. That's a bit terrifying. <laughs> um, but certainly, yeah, I think some of the like the visual variety is more had in this game. Also, this is a this is a a visual. You remember in Mario Galaxy the Yoshi head with all the Goombas on it? much earlier did this game come out because yeah this was 99 1999 year of the somewhat between the, the the monumentally groundbreaking 3d games Banjo, walk off the edge very nice uh but yeah no shenmue very yeah, it's got so many mechanics, and, and when you start off the game, you s it's sort of a little overwhelming. Uh, just like, oh, you know, you're wandering around this town, and you're sort of trying to figure out how exactly these controls work, because they're a little weird. It's all D-pad controlled, even though you have an analog stick. Um, fun fact, by the way, my, uh, my uh, controller... Um, this is a mild rant, but uh, my, uh, my 8 bit though Ultimate... The freaking stick is drifting so hard. It's like, how do I put it? It's like you put the, well, well I mean, it will constantly lean right. And you go into the, the tool to, I know, uh, not the Pro 2. The Pro 2 I've been using all the time for most of my retro games. It's just the Dreamcast layout lends a bit more to, you know, that, you know, that controller. So I was like, oh, I'll use that one. But um, yeah, it's like you go into the, um, the configuration tool and the, like, the stick says it's across, like, 45%. So it's not like, I mean, you could put a dead zone up, but, like, 45% is very large. I'm losing a lot of the stick at that point. Five of them. Okay. Uh, but, um, but yeah, also on top of that, when you do the, uh, the rotation of the stick, around 360 degrees first of all you've got two sticks so you've got an easy comparison point and uh, second of all so I hate it, you have to kind of go for air I mean I know going for air makes sense but like uh what do you need flies for uh flies are basically your uh, 100 coins except there is only exactly 100 flies in each level so every single bit you gotta get uh, they also can't despawn like Mario 64, so at least it's a little safer to grab. But they are also, yes, that is uh, one of the remotes, and probably I'll pick up that one once I've got my 100 flies. Um, and uh, like Mario 64, they don't save. You have to get them all in, in one go. Actually, I think uh, Banjo Kazooie is probably a better example. these killer lawn chairs so if i ever die uh what's the button there i guess pause if i ever die which may happen because i'm on two hits uh i usually go first go there may be some levels where i'll just be like yeah nah i'll just grab it later but um yeah i'll try and go first go so that that involves mostly exploring the levels and then it just involves re-executing just for the extra remotes so doing all those actually doing all those um little mini games probably doesn't even mean much because there's no flies in those sections here we are at the final area which is the giant hedge maze so yeah death is very bad do not die because uh there are no checkpoints in this level you get punished real hard it's like i'm at 73 flies and it's like yep yeah, whoops you died back to the beginning Fortunately, we are one pour away from getting more health, and that may potentially just push me over. That's all good, but uh, but yeah, the when I move my uh, the left stick around, uh, the um, the trying to move it directly up or down causes it to absolutely panic. It has no idea how to do directly up or down, and it's probably because 
uh, the left and right really doesn't know what it's doing either, so it will constantly try and lean right. Just cash, even when in action. It doesn't sound like drift actually, because drift is usually like. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe it is just drift, but uh, whatever. It's uh, it's the kind of I don't have the whole effect kind. But this makes me wonder, isn't it weird how nearly, like, every controller from, like, 2013 onwards just, like, sucks? The analog sticks are terrible? Like, what's going on there? What's, what's been happening? We've got Switch controllers, Joy-Con drifting, which are the most notorious ones. Um, the PS4 controllers drift, the Xbox One controllers drift, they advertise how good Hall Effect is, but it's like, hey, I don't remember my PS2 controller drifting. I don't remember, my PS1 controller still works. The sticks are stiff, because, like, you know, that motion isn't really meant for aging that long. But it works. It, it still works. It still detects every angle I want it to. Like, I, I don't get why the most, yeah, maybe. I think that they like all of these companies have like cheaped out a little bit, and now we're unfortunately paying the price when it comes to just like they're just dying and in, in, in their lifetimes. I've gone through two Joy Cons drifting. My sister's Joy Con is drifting. Like it, like the Switch Two isn't out yet. Yeah, it, I mean it's probably different technology, and and I used to be a little more generous for the Switch itself because uh, there's my extra bit of health by the way, so. No concerns now, but I am still missing. Oh, oh, we got we got all the flies. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm still missing some of the coins. Um, also, was that all the paws as well? I'm missing two as well. Oh, we got all the coins. Okay, two paws somewhere. Fortunately, the game does save your paws and your bonus coins, so you don't have to grab them all in one go. Everyone likes a good hedge maze level, don't they? Is he gonna tell me diving? To swim, use the duck button to dive. Yes. Jump to swim. There's a duck button. As if ducking does anything. Also, you can't even move when you're ducked. Uh, but yeah, that that happened in the middle of Shenmue, so I noticed uh, Rio was looking like right all the time, and I was like, what are you doing? It's to the right. Awesome. Check this out. This is cool. So you can you can glide in the air. Hold the gun. Purely in this level. Purely in this level. But it's such a good, such a good time to be able to fly around like this. Or glide, rather. And yeah, lots of the levels have these little, like, kind of superpowers. So you can do this, so you can bounce over here, and you can fly over to these little blood banks. There we go. Oh, oh. There we go. Uh, so there's only one thing I gotta look for, and that's, uh, where's this last paw? And that is why I'm spending more time in this. Oops. I thought I had to jump for that. Oh, uh, well. Time for a, <laughs> a Playboy model. Well, Sherlock, you found a good use for that magnifying glass. Thank you, my dear extra. Now, what say you and I solve the case of the lovesick lizard? Not a chance, cutie. But hang on to that lens just in case you run into any lady geckos. Oh. Burn. <laughs> it happens, so. Uh. Let's stick, uh, stick drift aside. Uh. The, um. The. Uh. Shenmue is, yeah, it's got quick time events up the wazoo, you've got multiple cutscenes where it's just like, hey, you gotta press the buttons. Uh, it's got lots of dialogue, um, not really dialogue trees, but just like... With this raincoat, I make a perfect Sherlock Holmes. Or a flash. Nice. Uh, a lot of the beginning parts of the game, you'll, uh, you'll be wandering around, uh, literally pressing uh, A on people, and then... Ryu immediately goes, Do you know anyone who's Chinese? Do you know anyone who speaks Chinese? Do you know anyone who looks like he's just like, man, that's the only lead he's got in avenging his father. Um, but, uh, this isn't gonna even do anything because I've already got the token. 
What's the point in even coming up here right away? Oh, this this sticks out the thing and I may need to jump up the ledge. Because I think there was a... yeah, there's a doorway up there. It's not like I just did this level already. Um, but yeah, you mostly spend a lot of the game just wandering around and talking to people and really getting this story sort of... Um, how would I say? Like, just... I guess organically, you, you just need to talk to people and people tell you things and the very, very ambitious, but I think it works very well part of the game is how much dialogue they threw into every other random character. I think that they, they put in a lot of love in making sure that these characters, you know, feel like they've got personalities, that they've got routines, that they've got goals and other things that they care about, and they respond to Ryu in very different ways, either through, like, just complete disdain sometimes, or, you know, like, they want to help but they really don't know, or they sometimes lead Ryu down a, a bit of a <laughs> bit of a wrong turn uh, to try and get somewhere. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, though, if you ask enough people things, you will figure out where to go. I'm glad I've taken three hits just by, like, hitting these guys. You like how there's a, like, that happening over there, by the way? It just exists out there. Do not jump off, uh, bear heads. Um... But yeah, the main core of uh, Shenmue's, I guess, action comes from its uh, fighting game mechanics. So uh, when the game feels like it, uh, you'll start to be in a scenario where you beat up people. Uh, it's sort of, I'd probably classify it as uh, it's mostly um, virtual fighter. Uh, <laughs> Ryu himself has a virtual fighter poster in his uh, room, which is that a little off in time? Because this. Because Shenmue came out in, or is set in 1986, and I feel like Virtua Fighter wasn't out then. It's directed by the same guy as well. Uh, I gotta go back and get the other two remotes as well. Look at this just cheeky ledge over here. Oops, never mind. Uh, but yeah, I am also missing the pool, so... And that's why I'm doing these little bits as well, again, because uh, I accidentally got the wrong remote. All this fancy stuff and no TV? No TV? So unless there's another pool just hiding in here, which uh, potentially could be the case. I only looked in one of these, uh... Uh... Do all the minigame... Yeah, this was one, yeah. Not every level has a remote like this. Like, all, all the remotes are all their own unique challenges, so it really does depend on the level, but, uh... Yeah, you do have to get the three remotes in three different, you know, entries, basically. Interestingly, when you die, it doesn't even exit out of the level, but it does still this store everything you've done up to a checkpoint. For a video game. For a video game. Well, I don't really see it clipping any of these, uh, you know, pockets. I've only played, a uh, Billiards once, but I felt I was okay at it. I feel like Billiards is something that's, like, very easy to pick up, but it's hard to master, which is a great, a great kind of sport. Nothing better than a good mental in the morning. Until you're dealing with people who are too good. And then <laughs> and then I don't want to play with them anymore. It's like bowling. Actually bowling's very tricky if you just you struggle to straighten it out. So yeah, where would this uh this poor be? I'm thinking it could still be hiding in the hedge maze, but given that I got every uh every fly. Be curious. Uh, picking up all, f uh, or at least half the flies again, will give me another life. So well, I don't imagine I died that often. Would be pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, Shenmue's fighting mechanics are a little janky, I find, because sometimes he just doesn't quite swap towards the right person or location you really want him to. Uh, the controls are played out as if he's fighting one person. 
he, he locks onto someone in front of him, and then it plays, uh, I'd say, like Tekken, where it's sort of forward and back. Oh my gosh. Cheap view viewers. Are you a cheap viewer? I didn't think so. All of our viewers are rich and expensive. Only the best viewers. I don't see any other... <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I don't see any other pause in here, so... Granny? Jethro? Uncle Jed? Oh, that was a proper death. And his head is gone. Does that mean I have to do all that again? I think it does. I think it does. I think it does. How to make your stream two hours in one fell swoop. Accidentally drown. That's what I get for talking about Shenmue. Um, I'd probably say Shenmue's biggest problem is that it's a jack of all trades kind of game. It doesn't do anything particularly amazing. And, uh, that whole... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very certain as well, the, uh, the third level I'll do is a lot longer as well. Just a hundred percent, or not to... <laughs> not exactly the beat, but just to, like, wrap my head around. Um... But, uh, yeah, Shenmue's biggest problem... Ooh, you watched someone play it once. Very nice. Um, I think its biggest problem is that it doesn't actually, like... Give itself quite enough time to challenge the. Oops. It doesn't quite give enough self, uh, itself enough time to challenge the player truly, and it's a little worried that the pacing gets ruined if the player gets too stuck. So I like that when it comes to walking around and trying to ask people for clues, because eventually the player will ask en enough people to figure something out. But when it comes to the quick time events, sometimes it's quite nice and it has alternate like branches and ways that the story can go if you do fail some quick time events not anything too large or uh meaningful but definitely one where hey you know if the player stops the thing then a the character will thank them later or will teach them a move later or something like that um ground like groundbreaking at the time but basically completely obsolete and has bad implementation of its elements i don't think it's too bad and i think the thing that really stands out is its commitment to making like okay when, say for example oblivion is a great kind of example game uh, oblivion advertised how groundbreaking it's like real world systems were and everyone has like schedules that they they attend to and they will sometimes randomly chatter but a lot of it feels very fake and phoned in like it's just like dialogue randomly generating against itself Everything in Shenmue feels crafted. It feels purposeful. Um, every single building has some sort of use in the story. Every single person shows up somewhere uh, in some meaningful way. Um, many people will have multiple conversations as well and will potentially know multiple things. Um, sometimes you're a little bit, you know, like, myth that, like, something doesn't get a callback. Like, you do a thing and then it's like, oh, it's not, like... <laughs> that's it, like, that's the one thing. There's a there's a mechanic very late in the game. Um, and it's just like, yep, it just never comes back. It, it's only used in this one section. Uh, forklift racing is probably a, a good meme as well. Um, but on the other hand, I think there's something quite endearing about the game really trying to, like, give you things to do. And then to force you to just live days. You can't fast travel, you can't wait. Um, you can, you have to sleep at 8 o'clock, like, there's so many things that the game really pushes you into just to set that narrative tone and that sense of world scale, uh, and community, and I think that's really good fun. Uh, but yeah, where it goes wrong is, um, when it needs you to fail, or sorry, when it, when it allows you to fail, or when it won't allow you to fail. Uh, failing some fights will sometimes just result in Ryu getting his butt kicked and he needs to, you know, do something different. But sometimes, and especially later on in the game, uh, you just gotta, like, replay that section. 
Yeah, little vampire heads, yeah. If only there was a mirror in this level. We have a glass door, but not a mirror. Given that I've only gone through the hedge, this yes, this is the Halloween- well... I'd probably say the Halloween level is, uh, the Halloween levels in the second game. There's probably like four of them, but they're all like, spooky mansion levels. What's a, what's a, like, uh, a detective mystery which has, like, a, a level of supernatural, whether it's, like, werewolves or, or uh, vampires at the end? I'm very certain I remember one of them. Can't recall which one in particular, though, but it's, it probably exists out there. Alright, this gives me one last, one last check around here. Bram Stoker's Dracula. It does start in a mansion, but that's like a spooky castle, and and that's just a uh, Keanu Reeves wandering around for like 25, 30 minutes. It's a fun book, though. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, particularly with a mansion, yeah. Because I, I, I know, I was going to say, what's a, what's a, uh, a vampire story that everyone knows and loves? Ah, yes, the classic, Twilight. Dude, what, whatever happened to the Twilight site, guys, you know? There you go, I turned on all the TVs, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, it did mean something, we did it! I found it. Also very nice. Very nice. <laughs> All this fancy stuff and no TV. So I believe our remote is just uh, chilling right here. There we go. And now I just wander through the hedge maze again, and we'll be done with the level. But uh, but yeah, yeah. When Shenmue doesn't know what to do when you fail, it just sort of feels like it's padding and sort of pushing you in difficulty for no reason, and then it just gets easier. It will naturally make the game easier over time if you're failing things. Uh, so... Yeah, failure doesn't mean too much, really. Um, ultimately, mechanically, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but uh, one sort of endearing aspect is uh, how it has these arcade machines and you can play the entirety of Hang On and Space Harrier, the arcade versions, which I think is nice and interesting. And it's got, yeah, those extra little mini games. You know, it's got darts, it's got uh, pool, it's got um, uh, the forklift driving I mentioned earlier and this whole late section of the game where you just... Menial, menial labor, you just stack boxes. But I kind of like that, like, Ryo himself is a bit of a blank slate kind of character. But he speaks enough that, you know, he drives the plot and feels heroic. But he's blank slate in the sense of he doesn't really opine too much. Or, uh, you know, like, he, he aligns with the player a lot. Uh, and I think that makes the whole story stand out a lot stronger than particularly it probably should on paper. Um, and that's, that's where Shenmue shines. Uh, by the way, uh, one feature you probably uh, didn't, wouldn't even realize exists is uh, just in this room, if you look at this picture of Gex chilling up here, uh, you turn into a vampire just just here. And that's how you can get that height, or at least uh, if you could do it off a chair. But it's like, this is the only way you can get the height to make the distance. Ugh. There we go. Oh my gosh, he even mentions Keanu Reeves. He did it! He did it! He literally mentioned the movie! That's fun. Uh, as well, this statue head also exists, which leads us to our bonus game, because we haven't done the bonus game. Let's get it on! Let's get it on! So, Gex Stream Sports! Yeah, every bonus game is doing something a little different. Oh, I lied. The snowboarding is back. Christmas is saved. This this looks and is awkward, by the way. 
I'm just a nose grabbing an indie away from the end. I don't care that it's reused scenery. We need more Christmas. We need our signs that say Jingle Bell Santa Smells. They give you so much time for some of these earlier bonus levels though, I swear. I swear. But yeah, no, at the end of the day, uh... My only other bigger gripe with Shenmue is that even though it does wrap up virtually all of its story in the one game, it sort of does feel like it's juggling a bit too much and then sets itself up as if it were the start of a long saga. And I know, I, d I haven't played the rest, but I know that this one ends in enough of a cliffhanger where you really haven't done much to actually stop the villain. Uh, and then the second game, I know, also ends in a cliffhanger. And then the third game ends in a cliffhanger after a 20 year absence and a Kickstarter, making people think it was going to finish a trilogy, when really it just sets itself up for yet another game. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. So, I think you have to take these games for what they are on their own. Um, and what this game is on its own is a very, very fun, just kind of experience, a journey, if you will. Um, also, I'm good at hang on, so I actually, I got that little trophy pretty easily. It's pretty alright. Square, X, circle, circle, triangle, square. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, that mostly does it for this world, uh, but there's one, uh, or this hub rather, uh, but there's one last thing that, uh, you may have noticed I did once. The cheats, uh, well they're just cheats. They're just actual cheats. Like, one of them is like, gives you ten lives, one of them is like, actual invincibility. Um, it's just a way for the game to tell you about the cheats. Three lives, by the way, <laughs> just go back there every time. So there's these uh, little tape machines, there's two on this top floor and I think there's one on the, the bottom somewhere around here, here we go. And if you stand on all three of them, uh, or attack them, uh, this door opens up. Uh, which leads us to our hubs secret level. So the hubs themselves will have their own little secret level. Uh, all three of these characters play the same. Uh, if you could select, cuz, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's literally the same level for each one, don't worry, it's not actually three different things. Um, but these uh, bonus levels uh, involve uh, picking up all 50 flies. And we have three minutes, which seems like I have a ton of time to pick up a lot of flies, uh, but uh, you know, there's only exactly, uh, that many. Uh, there's also little hidden extra things. If you jump towards this wall, there's a invisible, well, there are, I guess a wall you can walk through, and you pick up this little clapboard, finish the level with the clapboard, and you'll uncover a secret cutscene that not a lot of people actually realize is in the game. Also, this guy is dead. Not a lot of people actually realize that that's even in the game, and the for some reason, the fourth bonus level doesn't have that, but the other three do. And this is one of them, so finish level with that, and we'll see something that you may not have seen before if you know this game. Get your tags. Old school product ink, 100% legit. That's right, the pigeons are not turkeys. I like this level though, it's nice and fun. And it's actually not a city level quite themed like this. In fact, a lot of these bonus levels sort of exist in their own little space. Gex is wearing something he doesn't even wear anywhere else. This fireman outfit. So it probably just seems like they had an idea, but they're not enough to really turn it into a full level. And none of these bonus levels do anything that's like too off the beaten path. So... Yeah, but uh... Yeah. No, yeah, Shenmue's great. I'd, I'd say give it, a, give it a play. I don't think it's like an absolute masterpiece. Um, groundbreaking, certainly, and I can definitely see this and alongside Metal Gear Solid, probably, as very, like, strong hallmarks of how games became, you know, modern in the sense of they just invite players to, like, play through them. I think Metal Gear Solid probably has a much better, um, pedigree. Uh, it has, well, sequels, I guess, and generally more stronger mechanics. The stealth mechanics are very groundbreaking for what they are. Um... And, uh, I mean, Metal Gear Solid even, you know, it exists to this day, so... Whereas Shenmue... Shenmue is Shenmue. It, it did its thing, and that was it. And I'm missing one of these, and I don't know where. I've got 40 seconds, but... I'm cutting it if I don't know where it is. 
Oh, was it was it on that ledge? I just briefly saw it. I don't know. Oh no, it's a vending machine. It's a vending machine. And now you gotta pick that up as well. So I'm glad I found that on the uh, sooner than later side. Yeah, no, you got plenty of time to pick these up for the most part. So pick up your shield. We got a little cutscene. Nice. Uh, yes, it's 10 seconds and it doesn't mean anything. It's just there. <laughs> also, if you don't know they're in the game, uh, you will know they're in the game because uh, some of the cheat codes are just literally activating the cutscene on you. Uh, but we picked up a shield. Also, you don't have to get the clapboard in order to actually get it. Um, well, to get the shield, that is. What does the shield do? Well, you're going to have to open this vault. Maybe the cheat codes are used in this vault. I've completely forgotten. I've played the retro achievement set. You're not meant to activate cheats, so I don't know. Uh, but that's this whole world. Um, but since it only has two levels, we might as well go into Lake Flaccid and uh, just play one more of the levels. Because I think that's probably the best way of uh, pacing this out. No premarital gex? Very nice. Very nice, guys. Uh, we could explore the hub world a bit. Yeah, we might as well. Let's get all the, the flies. I'm actually curious if, like... Time-wise, it'd be good to do... Mm. Mm. Nah, we'll do the level. We'll do the one level. Because I'm thinking... I do want to pad this out a little bit. Just to, just to hit Christmas, I know. Um, but yeah. Uh, only thing with uh, Shenmue as well... Oh, not only thing, because I've, I've had so many only things. Um, here's a... Egypt level. This is the level I was thinking of. I was thinking this would probably take some time. Um, it's actually got this like weird bit here as well, but we'll, we'll do the level first. So you need five remotes. We've only got ten. <laughs> We're a lot of the way there. It's tail, it's tail time! Holy Moses. Uh, this level is... Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a labyrinth. You have to sort of trace where you're going, and I think this will take a bit of time to... Wrap your head around and wrap my head around, so. There's a place in France where the ladies wear no pants. Nice. I actually starts off with a. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's, he's just gonna keep talking more and more throughout this like game as well. Uh, but we start off with this little kind of central area, but it does split off into. Well, goes in there eventually. Um, you'll see how this level is laid out, though. Also, the very hot quicksand, or the very quicksand. You say in the- yes, yes! He's the sorting hat in the European version. Get your dog, get your dog, Uh, there's a couple of walls you can break. Tortimer here will tell us that. Yes. So yeah, 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 he's, he's voiced by someone completely different and he'll, he'll say completely different lines because everything that Gex says isn't actually important to anything that the game is. Um, and I'm curious why they did that, like, it, it, I, I, I'm always very confused about, like, European versions in general when they do differ. Because, like, why? Why does it need to be different? Who knows? Maybe it's just appeal. Maybe they'll find that the, you know, the European version, you know, like having having a British voice actor is more. No, it's, I can't explain it. Midnight at the Oasis. I'm gonna get very tired of him saying midnight at the Oasis. He's gonna say that so many times, I swear. Yeah, you got these little these little bits that you can walk on the walls and uh, many levels, but when this level is over, I am selling this app. <laughs> Time to go postal. There he goes. Uh, but yeah, uh, one of one of Shenmue's probably like most hard to swallow, um, I guess decisions was how expensive it was. Uh, it, it's always reported that it had a budget, development budget, of 70 million dollars, which today's standards isn't actually that 
high anymore. Just for inflation, it probably is like roughly around the same mark. Um, but seventy million dollars is, you know, all the clams I can eat. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. There you go. Uh, but seventy million dollars is, I mean, that's a lot of money. Because when you think about it, the game probably was, you know, maybe sixty US if it was optimistic. Uh, it's at least Sega published, so you don't lose a ton of money to publishers just because it's all in-house. But even then, it's like, well, you've got retailers probably taking about 30% of that. So you're only really getting about $42 back. You'd need the game to sell... Mm, eh, 2 million, I guess, breaks even. That's a, that's a large number. Also, hi there. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, still though, like, you probably want, like, double that or even triple that. You want to, you want to be in the several millions of units. And back then, several millions of units seen, you know, there were some games that definitely did that. Like, Super Mario Brothers sold, I think, in the $10 million range, and that game clearly isn't a $70 million game. The easiest way to tell how much a game costs is usually how long the credits are, like, how many people are in it. Um, but yeah, by today's standards though, that's not actually that absurd, and that's what I mean by Shenmue is probably a very forward-looking game, because a lot of what makes Shenmue quite, like, original actually is stuff that games nowadays do. The quick-time events showed up a lot more after Shenmue, and the, um, the, you know, I, I'd say that way of storytelling definitely grew quite a lot uh, over time, um, having, you know, Lots of mechanics to toy around with. Um, you know, pe people will attribute some of that to GTA, popularizing that. And GTA did a great job of making it, um, I guess, uh, like mainstream. And also, GTA was generally a bit more consistent. If there's one thing GTA will never try and do poorly, it's the driving. Even if GTA 4, the camera is centered behind Nico and not the freaking car itself, which throws me off all the time. Um, but all of, all of GDAs have always been, you know, solid in some angle. This is, that that's a bottomless pit, by the way. That actually is kind of gnarly, if you do ever fall on that. But fortunately, this level does have checkpoints. Also, yeah, you see how it throws you off? Because the camera follows Gex so exactly. There is no leeway to the camera. It just follows him, so. Uh, but would you look at that? We have two power-ups. This one, uh... Let's you spit. You can use that to spit at this guy who just chills and then dies in one hit. Here we are. No beach and all the clams I can eat. Also, flashbang checkpoint. But uh, yes, if I die, like right now, then you restore right at the checkpoint. Also, the checkpoint restores when you die. Sometimes it's just worth burning a life just so that you can then come back to a checkpoint and hit it later when you've got more more pause to say. So, just a curious strategy. But yeah, sometimes the camera is like this, and I hate it. King Tut's tomb, King Kong's tomb. You know, you know. Jump on the camel to use it for transport. Use tongue to dismount. So, uh. Also, uh, Caligula plus anyone. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so Shenmue's budget is is very absurd, but uh, I think that's a great segue into... Uh, also, very nice here, the chiropractor. Also, am I first personing? Why am I so high up? Hey, forget about it. Oh, that's half of the flies, at least. Uh, but I think that's a good segue to talk about just something involving newer games, which is, uh... We got the Ubisoft Double Dis feature. It... <sighs> Ubisoft is a very popular punching bag right now. And I don't think Ubisoft appreciates that. Uh, also, uh, just a disclaimer. Uh, no video game company has ever sponsored me to do anything. So, everything I say, uh, I will gladly take it back if Ubisoft gives me free game. Nah. <laughs> Uh, I, I really don't have any intention to like even like play some of their games recently, uh, for a lot of lot of reasons. It's uh, 
not not exclusively just like ah oh, you know like like terrible I would I wouldn't necessarily say terrible storytelling because I'd need to just play the games to judge but uh, there's a lot of shocking performance there's a lot of um, weird stuff like Star Wars Outlaws just casually undoing the stealth mechanic requirement I'm just saying Shenmue has a required stealth mechanic I don't see anyone complaining about that one also very nice I'm glad I missed that Interestingly, I'm very certain there's a checkpoint, like, along here as well. Oh, and you can also just jump up here to skip, like, a little bit of the level as well. Just a little bit. It, it only saves you a little bit of time, but a little bit of time is alright. Remember, um, Jack and Daxa ending with platforms that are just like this? Gex is ahead of its time. Or they pulled it out of Egypt. Uh, I always, yeah, I always do this one a bit wrong. Is that that's swinging, and there's the uh, end of level, or is it? Hold on, yeah, wait. <laughs> I guess that is the end of level. I guess that's King Kong's tomb, so I'll probably save that for the end of the. Actually, no. I don't think that'll be the, the one I get. I think the one I get is probably the, um... The three little staff poles. Uh... But yeah, Ubisoft is everyone's favorite punching bag for a couple of reasons. Uh, and in particular in the news... Uh, over, I am selling this hat. In the news uh, this, uh, this week, or the past week, uh, there's two stories. The first one of which is... Uh, Ubisoft, uh, in... I've forgotten which game they're touting that has this. When this level is over, I was like, I I'm swear so this area continued to... Oh my gosh, by the way. There we go. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, oh. He's stuck. There we go. Forget about it. Um, I'm not going that way. It's much too but uh, yeah, in one of the end user license agreements, they basically invite themselves. I think this could be on the new Assassin's Creed as well, which is curious that the end user license agreement is visible. But... Like you. Sure, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, uh, in it, it permits that Ubisoft has the ability to uh, effectively monitor the RAM of your computer. That's what they like claim on themselves like as in like you you have granted us permission to do this uh mostly to stop anti-cheat and anti-piracy now anti-piracy is always a dubious uh area for me because uh, section 1201 of uh, the digital millennium copyright act uh makes adding uh some form of uh i guess uh, piracy prevention it goes again. It makes any form of piracy protection basically uh, an act of copyright violation if you try and crack that, which is very, uh, very just like, oh my gosh, that's not what copyright law is for. But that's how it is. That's what that, that's what that section is. That is explicitly what it's for. Um, but for anti-cheat monitoring, it's like, well, it, like, this probably screams out like this is a generic um, Eula that they're probably going to just roll out to uh, virtually every program. But anti-cheat is uh, directly at odds with, uh, well, uh, the fact it's a single-player game. Like, if I cheat in my single-player game, who cares? Who is hurt here? One angle that it could be hurt is Ubisoft wants to make money because they are selling battle passes and uh, microtransactions in my single player game. And uh, if I were to, um, you know, introduce a little bit of memory. Also, these are this, this is the only reason why I actually wanted to play this game. It's just like, looking at this thing, man. This is just. Night at the museum, man, I tell ya. Here we are. No <laughs> it's just in this one hallway as well. I think it is. It's probably just like a eating sound, like a <laughs> eat fifty tacos. <laughs> Uncle Owen, this Archie is a bad motivator. 
There we go. We have destroyed the crack. The real crack was inside us the whole time. It's like this little ledger, I don't know what's up with that. Also, uh, port and throne. Very nice. How many toilets can we have in this game? Not enough. There's almost enough flies. Good thing there's a pit that this may kill you. Ouch. Ouch. Eat this. There you go. It's gonna be a little awkward because it's like there's a remote for basically going down this route twice. There we go. Always got one. And uh mm, I'm gonna lean down the other one. I'm gonna lean down the one with the uh the staves. The staves. But yeah, definitely a different change of pace of a level though, I'll tell you that. There he goes. He's, he be eating. He be eating. I'll kidnap all the oceans of the world, underdog. And the dog. Yeah, a very different change of pace of a level. So I like it. It's good fun. I realize as well, like we might be time wise very short, and maybe my idea of padding this out into. <laughs> I did get the remote, but I think I gotta go back and kill the guy again. I got, I got, sorry, I got the remote for the pause. Yeah, sometimes I'm a little bit sloppy. Speedrun strats. Exactly, padding, exactly. I wish my brother knows his way. That means I gotta see these things again. But yeah, he's probably chilling in here. The oh no, he's still dead. Okay, sure, I'll take it. Me backtracking was padding. Ooh, ooh, padding exception. Um, but yeah, uh, monitoring my system RAM for cheats in a single-player game just feels very encroachy. Uh, is there anything we can do as consumers to, like, fight against that? Is it illegal for them to do that? Um, I, I don't think there's really a law against, uh, program RAM snooping. Uh, I hate this camera. Where is the... Oh, it was down the bottom here. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. So what's through the door? That's right. Last pour. That was actually the last one as well. We got all the bonus things as well. So. Lock and load, little, Lock and load lizard. little lizard. Time for a quippy multi liner. Holy Moses, good job. Gex one, Egyptians zero. I've solved the riddle of the Sphinx, and now I shall work on the riddle of the Minx. And that Ooh. means you, Nefertatas. Hey, Caligula, just get me home. Rip. Rip. Uh, I'd probably say that the easiest way for it to not be legally binding is literally, like... I, I know there's always the thing of, like, when the Euler is too long, or when it's like, we don't expect users to ever actually read this. Um, because, real talk, I like, I, every time a game prompts me with a Euler to start off, I actually always say no and just see what the game does. Most of the time it backs out. Sometimes it closes, which is always good fun. Um, the fact that so many games have a no option is very hilarious as well. Um, but it begs the question of, are people really ever reading this? Like, I should, oh, if I was, uh, sometimes I always wish I was like crazy famous. So I could just literally go, straw poll, who's ever read a Eula? And then who actively like, you know, reads Eulas? You know, if you ever play a game and the Eula is there, like, do you read it? It's, because, like, for me, it's like, I actually try, only to then realize how much stupid stuff is in the Eulers. 
like uh, multiple ones, basically. There are so many games, by the way, that say you are not allowed to stream this. Oh, yeah, 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 the idle animations are so good. I should probably do this on every level. Hold on. Try and, yeah, get the camera stuck there. Padding. He was doing his little tut. I saw that. I saw that tut. There it is. <laughs> so good. So good. I swear, the, the artists on this game had a field day, though. For everything I'll... <laughs> Fireman Gex, Dracula Gex, and Detective Gex, and Christmas Gex. True, maybe I should go back for those. I wanted to do a pro jump off that one bit. We don't need a center up, we just need to jump from here. Wow, okay, this is my game. <laughs> exactly. Padding ideas. No, because I'm just thinking, like, I'm at 1 hour 31, and we're just blitzing through to get the other two remotes, so I'm sort of... I sort of am cutting it, like, way too short. Because, also, just, just as a note, there's only 11 levels, so... You know, if I try and pad it out to four streams, one of those streams is only going to have two levels in it. I don't think there's enough padding to somehow make that work out, so I think you're probably right. We'll do four four levels, because then I can have a stream with only three levels. And then we can have our slightly shorter stream. I'm expecting some other levels to be longer. Midnight at the Oasis. Midnight at the Oasis. But, yeah, nah. I've got a, um... <laughs> I've got a thing, uh, in the office tomorrow, so I'm hoping that, like, I've, uh, got the ability to render the video, um, and upload it before, <laughs> before I head off to work, because usually I work from home, and it makes, uh, uploading videos, uh, very easy after, after the next morning. But when you get to go into work early, it's like, ah! Always gets you. Workplaces with the work from home and then not working from home. Make up your mind, workplaces. I think, was it Amazon? They controversially basically went, okay, like, you can work from home, you'll just get fired. Like, it basically went like that. And it's like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, I, work from home is always like a contentious one because I think it really does depend on the person. Uh, but there are some people who are very more productive when they work from home and they become more productive and they've set themselves up with a nice home office to basically make it work out. I like it for my job. When this level is uh, selling this hat. Just because I've got a generally, sorry, a generally reliable internet connection and uh, I've got nice big monitors and uh, it's quieter at home. It is so much quieter at home. Like, I just, well, you'll never get it in, in the office. Offices are always noisy, no matter what. They can, they can do all their fancy stuff. They can even make quiet rooms, try and make it like, you know, very, very nice and, and inviting. But there's something nice about the comfort of home. And then you just, you just do your hours. Also, I'm more willing to work longer when I'm at home. I don't know. Probably because I'm not, like, commuting. Because it's like an hour commute in for me, it's like, oh. Public transport be like... Um... Well, yeah, uh, the other punching bag for Ubisoft, uh, is an article that came out, and this is entirely alleged. I will, I will safely say this is not based on anything that anyone with a name has said. Uh, but, uh, the article was basically saying that uh, Ubisoft are pressuring Valve to remove the current players in-game figures from their, uh, like, their Steam charts, basically. We don't want players to know how many people, or really anyone, because it's not just players, to know how many people are currently in-game in any game on Steam. Uh, the main reason is because you can very easily infer whether multiplayer games are dead, and you can very easily infer whether uh, people just never bought a game because there really aren't that many people who are actively playing it. Uh, the key game that they're highlighting in this case was Star, Star Wars Outlaws, which I believe came out in August or September, uh, but then got a Steam release 
uh, only like a couple of weeks ago. Um, but the number of people on Steam is very low, and the number of uh, reviews on it, I think you can probably look at it, it's in the hundreds territory. And for a big AAA game that just came out, that's a very low number, I'd probably say. Um, Star Wars Outlaws has famously had their sales figures already announced, and they basically went, yeah, it kind of really flopped. They, like, they dropped their initial sales target from, I think, 7 million down to 5, or 7.5 million down to 5.5 million. And then they're like, uh, by the end of, I think it's the financial year, or it could be the end of March. I don't think it's calendar year, no way are they like ever getting to calendar year. Because uh, I think it's only sold like between 1 and 2 million. Which, given our Shenmue example of selling 2 million total over its like kind of lifespan. I, oh, was it its lifespan? I think it was. Um, you know, 2 million, you still made a decent, sorry, you still earned a decent amount of revenue difference is Star Wars uh, Outlaws is definitely in the multiple hundreds of, of millions of dollars range. Uh, so they need to sell, you know, at least three times more than Shenmue. So the seven and a half million definitely needed. But uh, convincing Steam or convincing Valve to take down the player accounts for that reason, or really for any reason, because honestly, isn't this a helpful figure? It helps the consumer. They know what games to play, they know when games become popular, and they could be like, oh look, all these people are playing, uh, say for example, uh, Terraria out of nowhere. I only mention Terraria, because uh, Terraria is always a big game. Terraria always gets the, the traction. Well, that's this level. That's what I mean, this stream will be like done after one more bonus level. And then some other later stream would have been done after the second level. So... I just thought I would have taken much longer in the levels than I really did. Uh, we will get the goodies in the hub uh, afterwards as well. This hub's a bit more involved than the uh, previous one at least. So stand on all your switches and uh, reveal yourself a bonus game. Whack the five elves. You know what that means. Christmas has come early. It's almost the same level. It's actually almost the same level, I swear. The time is harsher. It's not th two minutes now. It's one minute thirty. But it really does feel like it's most of the same level. I'll do it just for you, Gex. I'll do it just for you. Hi, 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 hi. Oh my gosh, I. <laughs> there we go. Padding is when the uh, mechanics. It's only this as well, like. It's only this level where I really have that much trouble with somehow getting them with the spin. You can't do a jump or anything. Uh. uh but yeah, asking Steam to take down the thing. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, if, if that is real, if that's actually. Uh, maybe. I'm just a nose grabbing and moving away from the end. But I think it does, like, I'm hugging his backside. Like, I'm actually not, you know, hitting him, basically. I'm sort of hitting the air behind him. Who's this last dude? I, I see the clock there, but I'm trying to. Just visually spot him. Okay, I'm gonna need the clock. That didn't give me quite as much time as I expected. Probably up here then. Uh, don't tell me he's close rendering as well. Where is he? Oh yeah. What the heck? Okay. This is a clutch moment. This is a clutch moment. Clutch moment. Yes, we have a winner. We have a winner. Very nice. Oh, that was a good clutch moment. <laughs> so there we go. You can you can read this code if you want. Square, star, triangle, square, triangle, diamond? Diamond. Alright. 
let's get all the hundred flies on uh, this uh, hub world. So uh, the the starting hub world did not have flies, and uh, we can you know scroll over to which which level was it? It was mission control, and it had yeah two two remotes. One was uh, sitting on a ledge, and one was uh, I missed a paw. Ah, we'll, we'll go back at some point for that. Um, and then uh, one was at the end of the tutorial section. Uh, all the other hubs just have one remote for getting a hundred flies. Which means that they have a hundred flies. That means you have to hit these TV enemies and hope for the best. Uh, that also means I'm gonna peruse around where all the uh, hub worlds are. Or where all the, the levels are. This one's probably the worst one to actually try and find everything in as well. Uh, but yeah. Ubisoft is a fair bit of a punching bag right now, and I think it's partially because uh, all AAA games are easy to rip into. Uh, was it last stream I mentioned the Denuvo pricing? Mm, if I'm well, if I'm doing the hub world, sure, but the other hub worlds won't take this long. And if I pad that out into four, like, actually, well, yeah, if I do, if I do three, nah, 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 we'll, we'll. We'll do four. We'll do four. True. I... We can make this work. We can make this work. Don't worry. Oh, what's the current one? There he is. He's chilling. He's looking around. He's flexing. He's tapping his toes. Eating flies. Still looking around. He's still looking. And he wears the same outfit for all the hubs, so... Uh, but yeah, this... Oh, this guy in the boat. Oh, where is he gone? He's gone somewhere, but you need to... You need to stick by him because he's got a paw just chilling right there. Wherever he's gone, there he is. Oh, oh, there we go. Now I gotta make sure I nail the jump as well. Oh. 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 Alright, oh, no. No. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on target. There you go. <laughs> Seriously, that, that gives me so much anxiety, that one, I tell ya. Hot Dog Hill. That's right, this is uh, another level over here. This one actually would be... I don't know if it's the next level. I think it is the next. Seven remotes, yeah. This probably would be the next level. But we'll get the we'll get the goodies first. Uh, but that, that level is actually very quick, so we could probably nail that one pretty pretty easily. It also has this chill in here with a little bonus section behind it, so very nice. What are these, like, things called? Like, just wooden, like, spike traps, except they're not spiky. Also, it's a post of New joy -Z. New joy -Z. Um, but yeah, what is... Uh, yeah, the Denuvo pricing, which, uh... I think, um... The... Anti-cab things. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock Gex Monster. Uh, probably for tanks, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Or horses. Maybe horses just hate it. And then tanks hate it by extension because tanks are horses. Check out this umbrella that's just not quite high enough to unveil the secret. It's not quite high enough. You later made those. From ah, yeah, out of country, yeah. I think that level's a, a World War I theme level, also, I believe. Is this parrot home to a fly? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they're just mean like that. Cutthroat Cove, this is another level. We have a pirate level. Tanks are just modern cavalry. Exactly, exactly. That's right, we've got a pirate level. Deep cut from our Mario 64 PTSD right here. There's actually a fun little uh, jump here. Like, it just feels... You, you, <laughs> you can just do that jump. But really what you're meant to be doing is uh, climbing up this, because in the level, you climb up this. 
Special in Civilization? True. Yes. Dude, it's been ages since I've played Civ, and I actually really need to play Civ 6 before, uh, before um, Civ 7 comes out and I'm just like, ah, it completely in the dark. Everyone likes hitting pirate chests for coins, I mean flies. Civ 5's good fun. Uh, I, I would still like to know anyone who ever bought the Civ Beyond Earth DLC. Because I didn't, and it's still kind of pricey for what it is. Also, I guess uh, having the bonus level still locked because I haven't played enough other levels. Yeah, I remember, I remember people liking base game Civ 6 and saying it's the best base game Civ. But when you compare it to Civ 5 Brave New World, it's like, ah, oh, well, Civ 5 Brave New World is such a very well-rounded package. Beyond Earth, I played, like, yeah, I played one game of Beyond Earth as well. There's probably a lot of nuance to it, and I actually think that, like, some of these games maybe, and especially after Civ 5, part of it is, like, maybe there's a bit of a, like, how would I put it? Like, just fun bias? There is a game that is more fun, therefore this newer thing just is immediately discounted and people don't talk about it. But it may be alright, I don't know. Uh, for me, the point is graphics. I really like how you transform the world into five. On Civ 6, it's less pronounced and you build stuff on tiles. Yeah, yeah. You definitely feel like your city sometimes is a bit more unique, but certainly the, like, transform the world... Yeah, I get that with Civ 5, and that's that's one of its you know, best aspects, as it nails that. Wow, I've really been hitting all these trees. Even the two trees. So I have to try some of the scenarios. Yeah, uh, some of the scenarios, I'm like, oh boy. I I always feel like I'd never manage armies very well, and that's always like my Achilles heel whenever I play these games. I usually try and blitz the catch up and try and bait people with a bit of social engineering if I can. Uh, this, by the way, leads to the boss in a boxing ring, which usually signifies boss fight. You only need 13 remotes, which were actually already there, which is quite surprising after only three levels. Uh, but just remember as well, um, a lot of this game is designed around not needing to have the 100 flies. We've already gotten three remotes just from those. So I think if you ignore the 100 flies, you'll get 39. And I think you only need 30... I think you only need 30 to actually beat it. Sorry, 37 without the the flies. Yeah. So. That's a poop exit. You heard of the big cheating scandal for Civ 5 or Civ 6? No! Did we have a cheating scandal? I know they re they just removed the 2k launcher as well. So uh, props to them for going back and doing that. Because those games would be unplayable otherwise. Civ 6 just checked. Alright, lay it on me. What's the deets? What'd they do? Maybe this is why we need a uh, RAM monitoring. So the problem is as follows. Bounce around this ledge, by the way. We've got a little bonus point showing there. Uh, there was no structured multiplayer, so the community created their own, and it works. I know I know the um the in-game multiplayer is always like shoddy every time. <laughs> it always disconnects you so much, so anything that can maintain the state quite nicely is good. Uh, there was one player who has dominated for years, and absolutely dominated. I always feel like Civ has, like, too much randomness to, like, you know, esportsify it, but I like the, the fun, whatever. Like, if you got second place in the game that wasn't, like, top ten players, he, uh, each other, he would lose ELO. Oh, jeez. Dedicated. It was known to be a tryhard. Well, I mean, you know, you never become the best unless you're a tryhard. Uh, here's your super secret, top secret level as well. It's just chilling here. I hate, by the way, all the little, like, places. Also, th these guys. You ready for this? The swatting, you know, like, ah, uh, this is why I've done them last as well. They don't give you uh, flies at least. You can hit them. 
the bad guy making excuses when he loses. Uh, he blames the lag. You know, in Civ. Actually, if depending on the mode you're playing, that actually could be a thing. Like if you're playing a uh, first choice kinds of move. The pro <laughs> program they use for replays. Ooh. I feel like Civ is one where like what what can you actually do visually for like players? We'll see. Oh, you'll probably be explaining it. And the creators put as many safeguards. You can't use it to check a recent save game. Oh, because yeah, you can just export the map and then basically just like watch people. Yeah. That's always fun. Client sides, like, <laughs> that's the thing about the RAM tampering is there's a lot of client side, like, capability. Games tell the player too much. But also things like players around corners, it's like, well, you kind of have to know that the player is there, so. That's why wall hacks are so pertinent, because it's like, you know, nearly every game tells you where other players are, just, it draws graphics in front of them. Basically, he always made a save, and then exported the save to a VM with an advanced date set, so the program would open up and see the full map. Ah. Now that, that is criminal. Oh. That is criminal right there. Send him to the jail. Send him to the principal's office to have him expelled immediately. I could totally imagine that like, it, you know, just reversing a, a safeguard and then getting it. There you go, that's, that's like a just gutsy jump. Um, if the safeguard is based on clocks, uh, shout out to the to the developers uh, for trying the safeguards. But uh, yeah, word of, word of advice: never base it off time. It's because clients will always lie. Clients will always lie time. If you sync time, maybe rely on an external server to unlock the file. Maybe, but I feel like that'd also be kind of easy to get around. A really funny part, it only got figured out because he made an excuse after losing a recent game where he complained to one of the mods of the community that his map was super bad, and the mod just got bored and curious and looked at the replay. Wow. Hubris. Hubris pointed out the map and suddenly, oh, how could you? Uh, yeah, the trick is I gotta bounce up there, but... if you can get the height up there sometimes you feel like you get yeah like that sometimes you just feel like you get a bit of extra height out of nowhere it's a cheeky one very funny in the end that is yeah that must hurt though because like it when you become popular like that you will gather some fandom there is someone out there who will be looking up to you and you doing that is just like very tragic but that in the end uh always a good karma story people like you know cheaters never win but also like yeah yeah how do, how do we get around this it's gonna be nuts by the way when we have robots playing games all of a sudden because the robots are just gonna be looking at the ram anyways like like you you can't stop the robots from doing it the wrong way uh, we're at 99, and that's got me a little worried. There's the bonus. So people didn't like his personality, but I had huge respect for his skill because he was dominating so hard. I mean, a part of me is also like, if he's doing it purely by cheating the map, like, yeah, that is cheating. But he still has to, like, play the game somewhat smart based on that map knowledge. Like, it's an unfair advantage, but it's not like, you know, like, if I was looking at the map and he wasn't, he'd probably still beat me, you know what I mean? Like... And that's, that's what I find confusing as well. It's like, if you're gonna, like, be a cheater, or so the mod who figured it out... Uh, yeah, that, that's the other thing as well, is that, like, sometimes it's like, this is a... what's the term? Uh, let's uh, the public court, public the uh, I, I don't know, I'll look it up. Yeah, um, 
But the idea of, um, everything is, uh, like, judged by the eye of the community and not necessarily, like, you know, like, proven without a matter of doubt. Like, this is this guy's video shouting out that this guy is, like, a cheater. And now we have to basically have a video where people just suddenly go, Yeah, you're right! I hate this guy, he is a cheater. And it could very well be, like, this mod developer is, like, potentially in the wrong. I'm not saying his story is false. I- but, like, I'd- I'd look into it before I, like, start calling this guy a cheater. Um, although if he's claiming that, then he's probably got a lot of reasons in the video, so that's why it's like, okay, well, check out the video! But there's a- yeah, it's- it's always terrifying, because, like, there's some people out there who will just, like, do that. The video is an explanation video after the mod team- oh, the mod team banned him, okay. I assume he threw a bit of a fit as well. Okay, I'm just checking every room, because when you're at like one one thing left, did we get every other? Yeah, I've gotten everything else, so. Start looking at Ah yeah, yeah. When you go back and you figure it out. Yeah. That's usually that's usually like, nah, it's game over when people find out in the old videos. Or the old replays, and that's actually fun that they actually have that backlog as well. Where's my token? Shout out to Spyro the Dragon. The gems do not get affected by draw distance. The glimmer is always there. That is such a feature that so many games forget. Um, Mario 64 has that problem as well, where the draw distance is, uh, you know, stops the coins from sometimes appearing. I don't know about anything about Civ 6 multiplayer, all I know is because the guy explained it. Hey, that's a, that's a fun story, though. And that's uh, where we exit the level, so... Yeah, this is really where I spend the whole stream, just uh, trying to wander around here. I told you, just collecting all the, the things in the hub takes its time. But particularly this hub, because this hub is, like, quite wide, because it's got four levels. It's not in the outhouse, and I just have to, like, swing it. No, no. Where am I missing it? I'll keep an eye on this lower ledge. How the biggest cheater of X game was finally caught after Y years. Hey, it's good to, to find out in the end. I hope he didn't win prize money and he's just run away with that though. That's not fun as well. Those are often super interesting because you get a, a an in-depth explanation of something very technical, either gameplay or engine. A lot of the time as well, they're very good at explaining it. I'm I'm very surprised that um like, uh, you know, speedrunners especially, like, a lot of the time they know how to articulate and share their ideas and things that they found with each other. And especially to people who may not even have played the game before. They'll just explain this one mechanic and be like, oh yeah, you know, like, basically it works by, like, you know, you're pushing up against this ledge and... It's practice, yeah, I think. But I think it's also, like, it is their community. They will, um, you know, that I'm scared the whole time. There we go, did it. Alright, we'll go back, we'll do some idle animations. It's only two levels, is oh, it's... Two levels? Three levels. Three levels, because I gotta do the, um, the... The kangaroo bonus level as well. And then we'll do one more level, because why not? We'll do your idle animations, dang it. Uh, may I just add a- Whoa. I was about to, like, miss that so that I could, like, hit a save just to tell you that, hey, this game has, like, a very egregious lack of autosave. You have to explain your new mechanics yourself. Exactly. Rubber duck algorithm. Here we are. Gex in a- Gex in a frozen hood. Ooh, he's hip. He's looking around. He's looking around. He's looking around. He's hip. He's looking around. This yeah, okay. Just call me Chili Vanilli. Yeah, sure. I think that probably prompt <laughs> probably sums up exactly uh his animation.
Let's do the bonus game because that's the kangaroo one. Let's get it on. Ring the ten bells. It's bonus time. Uh, another shrimp on the bed. Very nice, by the way. Is he gonna stop or is he just constantly bouncing? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Poor animators had to just beat up Gex. Oh. Yeah, poor Gex. Beat him up one more time. One more time. One more time, please. Do an animation just for me. I don't think he wants to do it. Doesn't want to do it. Oh. Uh, and then to the to the mansion level, the mystery level, and then we'll do uh, we'll do the the war level. There we go. Um, yeah, I wanted to mention Denuvo costs. I realize how much Denuvo actually costs a company. Uh, it is uh, twenty five thousand US dollars monthly to have the like the service just up and running and then it's 50 cents per license activation per license activation is like um i assume uh just individual copies of the game like a key i don't know if that counts multiple installs of a game if it does then ouch because uh there's quite a bunch of games uh our fun example is the suicide squad game which i'm pretty sure is uh three and a half dollars right now it is dirt cheap. Don't get it. I don't- I hear it's not fun. You may as well just look at cutscenes on the internet. Or just forget that the game even exists. Um, but uh, given that it's three and a half US dollars, uh, and 50 cents immediately goes to Denuvo, and I'm pretty sure 30% of the $3.50 is also going to Valve themselves for selling on a storefront. Uh, much less at Epic Games, I guess, but still, the theory still stands. Uh, some of it goes to the publisher, some of it goes to the development studio. Always oh, investigating. Look at that reflection, man. It's got quite a bunch of things in the reflection. The meme with the Uno draw 4, but change would draw 25. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's always a big thing as well, like, when you buy digital games, one of the, like, things we get for granted, pinch of salt by the way, this never changes, is that you get the ability to download it forever. There will be a service that lets you download the game, it will authorize that you can download it, and then you download it. Do X or draw 25, and then the next panel is 100 cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you can download a game so many times, is like, you're obviously, you know, costing bandwidth and somewhat storage costs as well uh, for having your content replicated across so many servers uh, and Valve is sort of already eating costs for things like save games and screenshots and things like that but uh, that's fine you know they're, they're pretty cool with that oh I was like where's our, our one that's left over man if only there was an easy way to grab that I saw it with the suicide squad yeah the, the three bucks and I'm like they are... how much money are they actually making off that? Like, they need to be, like, making... making it off, you know, like... Off, uh, like... I'm suddenly very thirsty. I don't know, in bulk or so, so much? Um, but that game is also, like, isn't it, like, a 70 US dollar game as well? Like, they're charging up the wazoo for that. I think that's well, this is a, like, a... Actually, do we have a Dracula emote as well? Emote? Idle animation. Emote. Ugh. Hey. <laughs> I wanna lick it, but my tongue will get stuck. Very nice. Yeah. Let's do this glide, see if I can grab that. Oh. Hey, very nice. I was like, we need to grab that at some point, so. There we go, there's another another tick on the on the health bar. Uh, so yeah, we'll do this one last level, and then, uh, I guess we'll do three streams instead of four. <laughs> no pre-marital gex. Uh, but yeah, oh, it's insane, and... Stop! What am I stopping? Stop! Wait a minute. 
Oh, the first sub-secret level. Oh, yeah, five main gex. Yeah, sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad, I forgot the fireman gex. You didn't mention vampire gex, did you? Hold on. I'll probably scroll through chat and be like, oh no, fireman gex was there the whole time. Sorry, uh, vampire gex was there the whole time. Uh, okay. Just around here, <laughs> grabbing these. He replied to himself. I need a I need to update the um the tool I use for the chat because uh, this is the Streamlabs elements and it uh it's all right. It used to be very glitchy for some reason. I don't know why, but um it's uh yeah. I mean, it doesn't tell you that someone's replying to someone. It just gives you the at. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. For reference, uh, anyone looking at the the timestamps. Oh, I can't even click it. <laughs> On my end, it doesn't even, like, let me, like, see up to the original message. And that's just the, the actual Twitch chat in bed. Any animations? Well, no. Does he have an animation? I need, like, an IRC chat, and then it's like, there you go. The forever IRC chat. If anything happens, I still have IRC. <laughs> Yeah, dis yeah, Discord signal, um, Slack's also good at that. Oh, speaking of Slack, uh, there's a, um, there's a, uh, a wild... I'm surprised he doesn't have an animation. He just seems to be doing these regular ones. Yeah, what a shame. What a shame. Oh well. Uh, but yeah, oh, I, I'm shocked that, like... Oh, oh you got to the JC Denon lip smack. What a shame. <laughs> um... But uh, yeah, speaking of Slack, there's a uh, there's a new Gamers Nexus video about uh, NZXT, and basically they have a no, nah, because one of the later levels is going to be very gnarly, and the uh, the war level is very quick. Or I could do uh, do I? No, I'm going to ramble about the NZXT thing. So I think I've got enough time to ramble about that for the war level. Do JC Denton is like just I want to be him. Why are you locked in the bathroom? <laughs> Let's, get it Let's get it on. So here we are, the War is Heck level. Uh, this level is very straightforward, I find. Um, it consists of idle. Yeah, I'll do the idle oh. animation. Yes. Uh, it consists of three sort of scenes. Ryan, I don't know Ryan, but if it gets me a tongue full of bugs, that's my mission. There he is. Sort of have to wrangle the camera a little bit. Hi, are you gonna do, do these something? Boots come in red? Oh. Hey, there it you is. Know what this uniform needs? Shout out to doing some lip syncing as well. Like I know it's just his <laughs> his mouth just constantly yapping. Still. Getting it all timed is fun. Uh, we have, uh, mounted guns in this level. You can shoot the searchlights, because if you stand in the searchlights, well, I mean, I'll show you exactly what happens. They start shooting at you, which is not fun. And they have a bit of an accent. Which is curious. Uh, your goal in the, uh, initial room of the level is literally to just get all these, uh, tents. And they open up, uh, this part here. Which, uh, opens up to this tank section. I will do this tank section last, because the other section is more dangerous. And you have to do it without, uh, any checkpoints, unfortunately. Also, you got landmines everywhere, which is kind of annoying. Uh, no pepper games as well. Tell me a tutorial. Back in 42, we used machine guns to shatter searchlights, sir. Wow. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so the NZXT video... Uh, the main thing that Gamers Nexus is talking about in here, uh, is, uh, one... Have you seen a squirrel with a gun? Is that New Jersey? So many weeks, oh my gosh. So I think if you, uh... 
Yeah, I was like, this moves back. There we go, and now we got the trenches. We have uh, mostly just flies, but. The Pentagon spent $25 million on this one level? Wow, what is this? A third of Shenmue? Um, it was one of the good asset flips. Okay, it was a creative dev that used lots of assets, store assets, made a creative game out of it. Oh, that game! I think I saw like some development tra like trailers or, or just videos of him on Twitter showing that off. Yeah, I, I, I like the... Asset flip games are always like a bit of a curious kind of point for me because it's like, on the one hand, you know, you should really be using assets to just like... establish some levels and some gameplay before you get artists involved. You know, iterate. But on the other hand, it's like, uh, you know, some technically in the license, it's okay to just turn that into a commercial game, so... Depends if you can do it well. I guess as long as the squirrel with the gun is quite original, then... Yeah. There's so many that are, like, so lazy, though. Also, uh, please curb your lizard. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so so the, the story with the NTXT thing is that they have a, uh, a rent-a-PC uh, system, and they've sort of... I don't know if they've always had this, but uh, in particular, in recent times, renting a PC uh, has become a, uh, I guess, um, an expense, we'll say. The amount of money that it costs per month is in, like, the 200s US dollars per month range. And because of tons of bad games, it gives games like Squirrel with a Gun an additional surreal feel thanks to the standard assets. I always love, like, art styles like that as well. Like, if you can, if you can make this kind of hodgepodge style work in the context of your game. Yeah, just blowing up all the, or destroying all the tanks gives you a remote right there. So there's no effort there. This combat maze is probably where the trickier part of the level is. You gotta watch out though, they're throwing grenades with legs at you. I love the sprite work, it's just like, oh. It's just like... The one explosion, like, asset, that's it. Uh, there's flies all over the place here, so this is arguably where you could probably... I mean, you could trigger some of the mines sometimes. But one thing I don't like is that some of these searchlights are just impossible to hit. Ah. Uh, but yeah, so the price of some of these rented PCs are in the 200s or so dollars per month range. And a lot of PCs are not more than 2,000 US dollars. That's for the really expensive ones with the retailer up, like, upsell already. Let alone that you could just build one yourself. Um, but yeah, a lot of these PCs are like, well, they're more expensive to rent, not even own, but just rent, for like, 10 months. Now you got a sneaky peeky up to this guy and then slap him in the knees. Because he is going to ruin your day otherwise. Um, so, never mind that the worth isn't there. On top of that, yes, you do not own the PC, and if, uh... If you then actually sign up and you keep it going for a bit, you'll then realize some disturbing parts like uh, how sometimes the price changes over time. Like the price that you agree to isn't the price that you keep paying eventually. Um, they don't even, like sometimes they don't even prompt you. There's got a part in their contract which says that if uh, they accidentally overcharge you, you have 60 days before the overcharge is just like, nope, you, you agreed it. You, you didn't fight it within 60 days. Apparently it's normal for laws to have three years on those kinds of clauses, not 60 days. Um, uh, they have a uh, bundle in mouse, keyboard, and crappy monitor, and uh, uh, they advertise that it doesn't increase the price, but sometimes it does. Um, and then there's a part of the contract that also disturbingly says that uh, they own the rights to the data on the disk when the computer gets back to them. Which is absolutely abhorrent. Like, I don't know how on earth you manage to like have that as a clause. There should be- your clause should be literally, we wipe the data. Like, it doesn't matter. The company selling data is such an absolutely like, that real ticks- that ticks me so much. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, but like, 
of a rented computer? That's just petty. That is so petty. If that's the case, and not just like they wrote a very generic URL. Because sometimes, this is a fun part as well, the people running a program are not necessarily the people who did the legalese. And so someone who wrote the Euler has just like written stuff just to, you know, give them as much as they can. And then it's like anyone with like a little bit of human empathy would just look at that and go, uh, no, what? No. So like maybe they'd actually never enforce that, but I mean, he's chilling over there. I don't think he's actually... Because I don't think these enemies are actually tied to anything, but this is the area I would like to get my, um... Uh, oh, hold on, there's a grenade walking towards me. This is the area... Uh, yeah. This is the area I would like to get my, uh... The first remote, because the other one is... Got very few enemies. <laughs> it's a lot easier to just get them over here. Um... But yeah, they did an hour-long video of Gamers Nexus basically going on about how... Oh my god, do I have to take out the towers? Okay, which other angles can I get? This looks like a good angle. Somewhat, there it is. I think there's one more around here. Yeah, there's that one. And there's that one. Should be able to get that from there, and then do I just turn around for this one? Probably. Yeah, is that is that an angle I can get that at? Maybe. It feels like it's on the other side of the building, and potentially I could shoot through the little watchtower, but I don't think it's happening from that angle. But then what other, I, what other angle do I have? Oh, I guess this one. This makes a lot more sense. Is that it? Was that what's... Did I miss one more further back? No? What am I missing that would activate the, uh, the remote? Oh, we'll toy around with this a bit while I keep rambling. Uh, the hour and a bit video is, uh, mostly going, uh, on about, uh, this, and, uh, there's a... To, to do a little bit of, not necessarily devil's advocate, but more, uh, like... Don't necessarily put all your eggs into the everything that Gamers Nexus is telling you is, like, not hyperbolized in any way. I hear them still shooting at me. Oh, now it's open. <laughs> there it is. There we go. <laughs> that was it. Stealing the intel. I like how all these, uh, all these TVs also just drop down from a helicopter. Very nice touch. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll grab that at the end, because I think that's probably the roughest one to get. But yeah, no, it's not a very complex level, because, uh, now we just go in the complete opposite direction. And that's where, uh, the third remote is. That's why it's also, I'm probably missing a little bit of health. That'd be good to recover a little bit. But yeah, having the extra hits is, uh... You know, it makes most of the game pretty straightforward. I say most, because there is one level out there that will be the bane of my existence. And that's why I, that's why I want to give myself a little bit of leeway on that level in particular and just get this one out easy. So there we go, back out this way. So uh, this level is kind of neat because we've got this whole tank part. Just man this tank. Also, does Gex idle in the tank? Probably not. But I love the flag. The flag is great. You can blow up a lot of these buildings, and there's just lots of uh, lots of flies just chilling in the buildings. There's not. I don't think there's anything in this room that actually tries to kill you. That's why I mean by just do the other one first, and then come back to this one. And get the camera stuck on so many buildings. Hi. Um, but yeah, Gamers Nexus uh, previously has advertised and promoted NZXT products. They are using this opportunity to then vocally terminate their uh, their yeah the sponsorship deals with NZXT. Um, and uh, yeah, no, like 
you know, maybe it's a, it's a good sign of integrity, definitely. Um, but also, Gamers Nexus is bigger than, you know, they used to be. They could definitely live without necessarily being with um, uh, that, that brand anymore. And especially as well, uh, how would I put it? They make money off the video itself, and they, they'll still say, oh, the video is sponsored by us, and our, our, uh, our dice kits, our dice, they have dice now, uh, as a product. Um, but, you know, like, they're, they're a YouTuber, and all YouTubers, like it or not, or well, not all YouTubers, because not me, uh, I, I'm, I'm the pure of heart here. Uh, but the, the, there's a lot of YouTubers that do YouTube for money, and, he, and it, most of the bigger ones, and especially ones that obviously would be spending budget to, to do that. 98! Okay. Could be a, a little bit of building missing. Maybe? Ah, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of building missing. Hop out. Or in the trenches, yeah. Uh... I was expecting something up here, but yeah, we'll check the trenches again, because it's not like the enemies respawn, which is nice. Thank you, Gex. Well, they respawn if you die, I guess. Let's do a safety round around here. Yeah, it'd be very easy to just, like, lose some, some things in the trenches. Also, do I have all the other bits? I do have all the other bits. Very nice. I've been doing a good job getting the other ones. Sometimes they're a bit hard to find the extra bonus goodies. Oh look, cow trops. They'll stop me from driving the tank through. Well, oh. <laughs> they'll just kick you out. Um, probably very likely the, the flies are just chilling out here somewhere. But you see what I mean? Like, we've been in this level for 17 minutes. And I'm already, like, about to be like, yeah, like, all I gotta do is grab two flies, wander to the far end and get the remote there, and then do the tent and do the tank bit. Like, that's it. That- this level is certainly on the shorter side. And I'm all- all okay with that, but... Yeah, 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 the Egypt level was longer. The Egypt level, I'd probably say, is one of the longer levels. Um, the... Uh, there's an infamous Greece level, uh, which may potentially be next stream, depending on how I do it. But whichever stream has the Greece level, I'd probably say that's the three, the three level stream. <laughs> the camera's getting a bit stuck down here, but I don't see anything just chilling, so it seems all smooth. Um... Moral of the story is, though, as well, with the, yeah, the NZXT rental, uh, for you as a buyer, hey, renting PCs, do the math, uh, compare, oh, also the parts listed, uh, sometimes different from parts on the exact same named products that you can buy, and then they don't update the FPS numbers, so, don't trust storefronts, never trust storefronts, do your research when you buy computer parts, it takes a bit, but it'll, it'll do okay, uh, don't trust raw FPS, that changes over time, don't, don't trust a lot of things, but just grain of salt. Usually, components within the same generation are linearly just better over time, as long as cooling is okay. So, for the most part, you don't, you shouldn't get caught out by a 4080 Ti. 4080 Ti? We don't have a 4080 Ti. 4080, um, super, uh, you know, being somewhat better than a 4090 oh most of the time. Because sometimes rebuilds do that. They have, like, Dell has their own, like, in-brand graphics cards. Although the graphics cards are usually pretty good. Oh, look, there's one fly? One. Ah, oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> well, it does help, but now it makes me more confused. Oh, there's, okay. Alright, <laughs> we're all good. Yeah, okay. Easy to lose them in the trenches. Just like in real life. <laughs> you could have told me, man. You could have told me you wanted me to drag on the stream longer than longer than it had to be. I see your ways, love. I know how you work. I know how you think. <laughs> Time for a bit of romance. Hello, soldier. All is fair in love and war. Now the war is out of the way. 
Well, don't you ever give up? I have not yet begun to fight. I think. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Research your computer parts. Um, Let's get very it potentially, just learn how to build it yourself, because uh, you'll usually get a better deal. Usually. Uh, not paid sponsorship in any way, but uh, if you're ever on Ozbargain, Techfast, or BPC Tech, and there's probably other ones as well. Nebula? Is Nebula hey, a brand? The um, level? usually, uh, have actually really good deals. Like, they actually, they run their margins thin, but also, they're doing a good job. So, I'm actually all for those ones. Those guys are, are, are great. Um... I appreciate jumping seems to just prevent me from getting hit. I appreciate jumping just... I am the greatest. Show me Seriously, all these, all these tents are just chilling right here. Like, that's the level. That's it. If you don't, don't want to build it yourself, tell my local store. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get, like, local technicians to just do it for you. Like, they'll be very happy to just literally source and then technician time. Like, that's it. And you're still paying, you know, the... the well, actually, you're usually not paying a premium. You're just paying for building it. Also, there's computer stores that will do the building for you as well as like a product. Like they're like, uh, add this to cart, and then we will build the computer of all the parts that you list. Like they'll just do that. And um, so there's so many options. You don't need a, a, a pre-done store to do it. You could say, oh, what if I need support? But if the job's done well, the computer itself really shouldn't break. Like. And then if, like, all, all you need is a little bit of just general computer hygiene rules and also knowing how to reinstall your operating system. Because usually when most people need support, they usually want to... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a real quick one. And then it's like, okay, now I need to do the tank level, which is down here. It's, it's right here. This is a really small level. And the whole point of this area is just you need to drive over the five, like, TNT boxes. There's somewhere in here. We'll find them. I, I told you, this one's a quick one. I also got to do the bonus level. I'll, I'll add. There's a bonus level. But you know how quick the bonus levels are as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, so what is there in terms of hardware before the end of the year? Uh, I, I won't do the hub bonus level. We'll do the hub bonus. Because the hub bonus level has a video. And only three of them have videos. So I think I'll save that for later. We'll save that for the end of the hub. And then... I prom I won't be finishing the... Next hub. in Because there's three levels in the other two hubs. I think? No, the last one only has two, actually. So yeah. The yeah, I think that'll work out. No, there's still... There's two more levels in this hub. We've got the, um, the, the pirate level... And then there's a, um, a western level. So there's more, yeah, there's more to this hub. And there's also a boss fight. Oh, there it is. There we go. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what we got before the end of the year? We've got the, um, the... Oh, for reference, I... Uh, yeah, no hub, but, yeah. Um... But for, for reference as well, I got a stellar deal on the Black Friday sales. This is a bit of FOMO for everyone. Uh, found a 5950X on Amazon for 440 Australian. So that's probably like 280, 290 US. Uh, done because the first hub. Yeah, the first hub's only got two levels, which seems very... It, it's not the case. This hub has four. Uh, the next one has three. And the one after has two. So that's 11 total levels. But yeah, it's all... Also, the first hub doesn't have a boss fight. So it's like missing stuff. It's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a little all over the place. Mario 64 doesn't have evenly sized kind of sections to the game, though. It's only got uh, four levels between the uh, first and second bosses, for example. Lock and load, little lizard. So here we are. Defoy. Defoy. Oh my gosh. Strong. Strong time. Uh, it's a tank. So we've seen this already. <laughs> I don't need to stop an idle here. Hi, I would like to go up this ramp. That's literally how you leave. I was, why was that so temperamental just then? Uh, your goal is to destroy these tanks. The hit detection is at least easier than the snowboard. 
but you have to make sure you're getting them. I don't need that stinking time. It is a wider level though, I'll tell you that. There we go. And at some point you're then gonna wheel your way up another ramp. The tank section. Oh yeah, Mario Odyssey's got such like amazing extra sections, I'll tell you that. Here we go, so this is how you this is how you do it. Nice, there's a bathroom there. So do this. And now we go up. There's a ledge here? I don't know how he managed to phase his way through that. Uh, but you gotta run anti-clockwise around here. Uh, for hardware releases for the rest of the year, um, there's a... Uh, the Intel Battle Mage is reportedly coming out... Like, they're gonna announce it in the next, like, week or so. Ugh. They're gonna announce it in the next week and then it'll be reviewed and released before the end of the year, which is reportedly which is very exciting. Uh, the main reason why I think they're doing that is one, because Lunar Lake, the mobile APUs, already have Battle Mage architecture, like XE2 cores, so I don't know why the graphics cards are late. Uh, makes it tank Exactly! We've got the tanks, it, it's all cyclical, my man, it's all cyclical. This platform just phases out of nowhere. Don't know where it is. I love these, like, Gex murals on the wall. They're great. Very funky ledge, but it's purely because there's this one guy chilling right here. Is that number 10? That was number 8? Eight? 8? Oh, because we keep going. Oh. There's a guy. Hi, I don't like to hit him. There you go. And last guy. Easy. I'm going to have to do another one where there's less time, so that'll be fun. I'm getting insect bites on my feet. I tell you, the summer is kicking in hard. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a good point to end the stream. Uh, no auto save, so just a mental note. You gotta hit save game every so often. Uh, but we've gotten, what, 60 of the, the pause, and you only need 100 in order to max out your health. So we're most of the way there, but there's much more overkill. Uh, 18 of the tokens, I've forgotten how many are in the game, maybe 40, and 19 of the game's 50 remotes. So, started a download of it, of Civ 5. Dude, I, every day is a good day to get back into Civ 5. So, if you haven't played Civ 5 in a long time, give it another uh, another go. Just one more turn. That's the classic. Uh, but with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. Good progress. Finally saw Gex. Exactly! Now you know what Gex is like. Uh, Gex 2 is mostly the same game, so uh, I think that'd be a good, fun follow-up. I have so many sequels that I'd love to play as well. Um, yeah, the donkey memes, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, follow on YouTube, uh, for the VOD, um, I will wake up early tomorrow and try and upload it before I run into work, so that'll be fun. Um, it, Gex is a meme. Actually, watch, try and find the video of the Saturday morning Gex cartoon as well, that one's great as well. Um, that one's a good one. But yeah, Gex is a meme, but the Gex game is actually a fairly competent platformer, it's a bit stiff. But the variety in this game is great, so yeah. Uh, yeah, VOD will be on YouTube. You can watch all the old old VODs. If you're on Twitch, go to YouTube there. Uh, and if you're on uh, YouTube, stream every 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time uh, while it's still hot in December in, in Sydney land. Uh, and that's on Twitch. And you can follow on the Feddy, m.bnd.com. Uh, have fun. Peace. More December stuff coming along next week. See you, fellas.